Hello, hello. Welcome everybody to African Music Week. Today is going to be a really special uh, conversation. My name is Chinedu Okabam of Super Freak, Gumbo, and all of that good stuff. Uh, I'm very passionate about spreading contemporary African culture. And today we are going to talk especially about music, the music industry, um, given the constraints of the pandemic, where the opportunities are as well. Today, we are having a hybrid uh, discussion, so you're going to have some people joining in on Zoom, and also I have one person right here with me in the studio. So I'm going to start with you right now. <laughs> I've known you for some time. It's impossible to be in this scene and to not know you, Mr. Lukman. If you don't mind, I'm going to give an introduction for those who may not be fortunate enough to know about you. Lukman is the founder and owner of Lukman Akanbi Coaching, um, a management coaching firm based here in Toronto. He is a business coach and a strategist, and he's helped numerous businesses. Um, on average, he coaches about 25 founders and uh, businesses every year. Today, I have him here um, especially to uh, speak also as a manager. He manages Tommy. Um, Juno award-winning artist right here in Toronto, um, who also happens to be his daughter. Thank you for being here, Lukman. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. <laughs> and uh, if if he looks familiar from Kiza, he's also the founder of Kiza. Um, so that's another angle that you might know. I guess we can say you're a serial entrepreneur, definitely. Well, try. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, joining us online, we have an OG. Um, somebody who I've known for a very long time. Again, if you are in Toronto, you must be familiar. But I will just go through the 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 procedure and introduce him formally. Dalton Higgins is a publicist, author, journalist, and most recently professor in residence at Ryerson University. Now Dalton Higgins has written six books, including uh, Drake's biography. He is also a producer on numerous broadcasting initiatives and podcasts, including This Is Not The Drake podcast on CBC, uh, which was voted one of the best podcasts um, on Apple last year. Um, you might also know um, Dalton from his work as a publicist. Um, he's done an amazing job shining the spotlight, especially on black talent, not only in Toronto, from, but from around the world. Um, you may have heard about Stoneboy. You may have heard about Aloe Black. You might have heard about Jazz Cartier, Cardinal Official, Snow Allegra. All these people are Dalton's clients. So if you know about them, then he's been doing his job. Thank you, Dalton, for being here today. Hey, let's thank thank you for having me. Um, this is fantastic being in this group. You know, there's Edeham who's from Nigeria, uh, Rudy is in Ghana, T Nice is in Toronto. This is the uh, I, I love this. It's a high level African, um, you know, black people. This is amazing. It's going to be a great conversation. Thank you, thank you. And since you mentioned uh, T Nice, I'll get uh, right into him. T Nice from the city, from the six. T Nice is a producer, a songwriter and also a music executive. Um, T. Nice has collaborated with a bunch of people, but everybody from Sean Kingston to Belly to Cardi B um, and uh, Tory Lanez. He's a former A&R um, manager at E1, and he's got his own company now called Best Kept Secret. Um, if you are in this scene and you don't know about T Nice, is definitely somebody that I want you to follow. Really important work and a lot of potential to put this city and himself on the map. Thank you, T Nice, for joining us today. Uh, thank you guys for um, you know bringing me up. I really appreciate it, and you know Dalton and everybody. I respect everybody, and uh, I can't wait to get this information out. Awesome, and uh, we also have joining us from. Nigeria, um, Idahams. Is that correct uh, pronunciation? Idahams. 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 You see? Yeah. See, correct. this is why we have to check <laughs> these things. So, uh, my brother, no vex. 
eat a hams. I'm fine. Yeah, you know, one yeah, day, yeah. one day, this moment is gonna be famous when, <laughs> when uh, I'll be mispronouncing the name of a of a, of a big star, you know. But eat a hams, it is. Eat a hams. Okay, eat a hams yeah. is um, from Nigeria. He's an up and coming artist, recently signed to Universal Music Group Nigeria, and he recently dropped his single um, in. October, and actually over the course of this, um, I'll be talking a little bit more about that to find out um, what he's doing um, in the music scene and how that is uh, performing for him. So, Ida Hams, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you very much. All right. And last but not least, long distance, really long distance as well, from, yeah. <laughs> from Accra, right? From Accra, Ghana, we have Rudy. Um, Rudy uh, joined us um, last minute, and I'm very happy that he could make it. He's going to be a very good addition to this. I actually know about Rudy from the work he's done with Afro Nation um, and putting it on the map. It is one of the biggest um, beach festivals um, in Africa. But besides that, Rudy has also been involved with many... Um, Many companies from uh, Joy FM to uh, Muse, it runs a long list. But I'm going to save that for our discussion to find out also how this serial entrepreneur ticks. So, I've got everybody covered, right? Yes. Great. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. African Music Week um, has been around for, I think, seven or eight years. And um, with the pandemic, everybody is having to adjust to the ways that they, you know, they do things. And normally, all of you would be in the same room for this conversation. But, you know, um, thanks to the pandemic, uh, we have to use technology to, to make up for it. One of the things that I want to jump right into is, you know, the elephants um, in the room. How has the pandemic affected the work that you do um and has it been an opportunity has it been a blessing or has it been a curse or a, a bit of both i'm going to talk to you uh dalton because your clients rely on you to get the word out um and uh there's you know there's there there's got to be challenges and opportunities and i, I want to hear how that's um affected you so just for this guys i'm gonna call people out for specific uh, questions. But even if I don't call you and you have something that you want to uh, contribute, feel free to, to uh, jump in. So Dalton. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19 um, situation has impacted, you know, all of us around the, the world, um, in, in including us uh, as uh, black people of African descent. Um, different, you know, we're all coming from, Rudy is in Ghana, Ida Hans is in Nigeria, T Nice is in Toronto. But the pandemic has an impacted all of us in different ways, you know. Um, and from a work standpoint, as a publicist, um, it's been very interesting doing campaigns um, online on Zoom. Because what would normally happen is, I'm going to give you an example. Um, I worked on Buju Bantan's uh, last record. You know, it was a Grammy nominated, Grammy award nominated. Everybody knows who Buju Bantan is. And typically, what might happen is, uh, despite his uh, legal situations, um, he might come to Toronto, you know, artists would come to Toronto and then take them around to do interviews, you know, at the CBC, right. uh, to do oh. interviews with, yeah, newspapers, magazines, radio stations, uh, maybe I bring them, you know, Flow 93.5, maybe we do something with Bujo Bantan there, uh, but what's has happened is instead it's kind of like <laughs> Bujo Bantan is in his, you know, his situation in King, you know, Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm setting up, you know, doing interviews, talking to his management on the my cell phone and then doing all these zoom interviews so it's very interesting that way as far as performance now um i had um you mentioned the aloe black right so aloe black he's a big you know another grammy award winning musician he's a client of mine and to get him to do media is interesting because he's a good live performer so he likes to you know go on a show like he's going to go on nbc or or you know cbs in america and he's going to go and play with his band you know seven or eight piece band right so instead we had to do those interviews in studio you know what i mean so in his home studio in his he has a basement studio and then he would have a couple musicians and then they play for you know for cbc you know like a cbc q show and then do something for abc so it's been very interesting that way you know and 
I'd be curious to hear from even the musicians like Ida Hems, um, you know, when he's promoting, like he has an amazing song called Problem that just came out. Yes. And, you know, if you, you know, if you have to perform it on Zoom or, you know, <laughs> that is his thing. You know, I'm curious to hear. You know. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for that, um, Dalton. So that's from the point of view of the of the uh, publicist. Uh, <clears throat> let me let me just pivot right away and ask um, Idahams how that's been for him. You just dropped a single this month called "Our Problems." Uh, normally, um, you know, if things were as regular, you'd be performing them at like different clubs and uh, going on different shows, um, etc. But you know how how has this um, affected, or how have you? Um, what are you doing now um, to uh, promote your new song? Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the platform. I'm I'm so happy and excited to be amongst you guys. Like so many big names here. I respect everybody here. And my name is Sida Hams. Um, my real names are Hats in the Wi Fi Ishmael from. Nigeria River State. And what I do, I I make use of the social media where, you know, since the pandemic had broke, we just have to make the what you have using the social media to, you know, plug your music. And what I do, I just keep on posting, you know, being consistent in what I do. You know, apart from the music, I show uh, my fans and my family rather what I do, apart aside the music, like my lifestyle, what I love. Me, for me, I love cooking. And I, I make them to understand that I can cook a whole lot of time because I don't eat out. Like I, I make my food at home. So I try to communicate that to my hmm. family, which is my fan base and uh, fan base. And they they've been following me up, building with me and you know, it's it's been amazing and interesting. So um the pandemic made me realize that and your life is much important than whatever billions you're chasing in life. And you just have to take care of your health. And your health is very, very important. Yeah. So basically, I've been pushing my stuff on the mainstream, uh, online, and, you know, do so many stuff online, like, you know, carry my my fans along and let them know what I'm doing. And that's that's been basically on, on my social media. Right, yeah. right. Yes, um, that's really interesting that you mentioned basically using social media to connect with your fan base, and you refer to them as your family. And um, I think that, you know, for some people, using social media primarily to communicate when, they, when next they have a show or when next they have a single, for those types of artists, this pandemic has been hard, but for you, using it to basically communicate your like lifestyle, it's a way more organic way to you know to engage with your yeah. fan base. Um, so I, I think that's really cool and that's really interesting. I'm gonna turn turn to somebody who's here with me, uh, Lukeman. Lukeman, as I mentioned, aside from being a serial entrepreneur, restaurateur, he's also manages Tommy. Yes, so. How has this pandemic been for you as a music manager and for your artist, uh, Tommy? Uh, <laughs> pandemic, um, Tommy and my case was um, a bit um, challenging at the beginning of pandemic um, because she had just um, started uh, a career, barely mm -hmm. one year into her career, and um, based on my based on my um, my interest in the entertainment sector. I was able to take her on the road from very early. I mean, she started her career going on tour straight up with Whiskey, you know. And uh, so she had been so many stages. I think on the anniversary of her one year, right? That was uh, the our twenty fifth show was with Jack Weiss mm -hmm. at the Phoenix Theater, you right. know. And uh, we had all these big plans mm. to go on African tour, you know, some booked and everything. And after Jack Weiss, a few weeks later, there was a lockdown. Right. <laughs> so that was a bit challenging, demoralizing. Um, we hope, and in Canada was a bit, you know, a bit much. We couldn't leave the house. Right, right. So we're all over each other. So what we did, um, um, I'm also, a, I'm also a coach. So all of these things don't really face us as a coach. The first thing we realize that is the threat. Okay, so how do we turn this threat to opportunity? What right. are the opportunities out there? For right. me, for the first thing I realized as an opportunity is. Well, all the big guys too, and doing stuff right now. Right, right. <laughs> Nobody's moving. At Nobody's that point. moving anywhere. Okay? Right, and all the and all the clients, um, all the fans, are bored. 
So what do we do? We got to, we got to get straight right into the online game. Tomi as an artist, it's social media. She's not been very conversant with the online. So in the beginning, it was a very, it was an uphill task. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did, we converted our garage into a studio, um, a live studio, converted our garage into it, and I started forcing her, um, coaching her and forcing her to just keep going online, keep right. going online, and keep going online until she got comfortable and comfortable. And um, by the end of 20, that was 2020, yeah? Yes. By the, end of, by the end of 2020, she started making money online because what happened was the Canadian government, after a while, started looking for, um, because of mental illness was getting high. So they were now contacting all these promoters that, you know, you know what, we need you guys to start doing things online. online. Right, right. You understand? So mm -hmm. she was one of the first people that, you can, that had that visibility. Right. And how did we do it? What, what were we doing? Because you can't just be streaming on your own platform. We started, right. we started going like we're going to clubs. Right. So we go to we're going to simple restaurants. Right. So you, you have a social media handle, Accounts. right? Let's do your IG takeover. So that's what we really did. It was that IG takeover that we did. So we were going all over the world, doing an IG takeover. We did Sound City. We did MTV. Right. We did Kiza. We did you no. Know, and that was all kept us consistent. So all you guys are paying attention. Innovation <laughs> in the face of a threat. It's but important. Keep going. You know, yeah. So and that was what we did. And um, so when this, initi when this um, initiative came from the government and they put the money out, she was, she was all over the internet. So, I mean, she started getting paid. Right. So um, by June, she was already getting paid. Right. Uh, and that's really what changed um, strategy because now she had built this online present that we didn't have before. Right. We were able to drop an album. Or we had dropped an album and a, and, a, and a single. Right. And that one of the singles won the Juno Award. Uh, was that Nana? No. The, uh, which one was that? I Pray won the Juno I Pray, Award. I Pray. Okay, okay. I okay. Pray won the Juno Great. Um, again, very um, innovative. I think um, I thought it was very interesting, but also very smart. The fact that you leveraged other accounts, followings yeah. to build her own. That's it. Because people are thinking, "Why am I going to go online if I have a thousand followers? Only thirty people are going to like tune in." Yeah, but you have a, right, right. <laughs> but but you have all these big accounts that are lying. Dormant, not doing anything with and it. Their fans are looking for exactly for and content. But, but what I did, what we did, that was smart. Was we did not go to them first. She was on her own practicing. Right, right. Well, sometimes we would go online. There would just be three people. She'd but you would that. stay through it. Finish that one hour. <laughs> those, those three people are important. Right. <laughs> you know, they, they, right. they, they, they've, they've given you their time. Right. Respect their time exactly. and give them the best performance. Right. So what the, what I did for mindset was every one person that comes online is one thousand. Mm -hmm. So communicate to them like communicating to a thousand people. So anytime wow. she sees three people, she puts her mind in the person that she's in rebel. Right. Right. In the full house. Right. Right. <laughs> you know. And yeah. It was, it was a mindset thing, and of um, course. it paid off. It paid right. Off. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna talk to you, T Nice. Um, I know you're a songwriter, um, also um, a producer. Uh, a lot of what you do, uh, thankfully, happens indoors, your own schedule. <laughs> so, how did this have any effect on you, or was it business as uh, usual? Um, for me, it, it, it had a, uh, an incredible effect because. I was scheduled to actually be in, um, uh, in physical sessions with Cardi B. Mm. Um, that didn't happen when it first when the pandemic first hit. So um, that goes with all my other um, sessions that I was supposed to be at, True. even Sweetie. That didn't happen either. Um, but I was able to actually with Sweetie finish this record that I did with her, and it came out. And now you know Sprite just picked it up for commercial too. So. For me, I call it, <clears throat> I call it a gift and a curse. I call the pandemic a gift and a curse because through that process too, I was able to start a brand new business, uh, Night Sound Production, and actually sign new artists. And one of the new artists I signed, uh, her name is Leah, and she's buzzing in the city in America. Everybody is trying to sign her now. So I'm not mad at the pandemic. I guess, you know, I really wanted to do the Cardi B sessions and, you know, the big sessions, but um, also started my own production company where now I got the major labels reaching out to me and really excited. I'm like, that's not bad. It's, it's not a bad trade at all. So right. um, it is a gift and a curse. I'm just blessed to be here, to be honest. I'm not even going to complain about anything else, you know? I'm just blessed. Right. No, thank you for uh, for sharing that. Um, 
Rudy, uh, I know you are in Accra. Yes. You're in Accra, Ghana right now. A lot of my friends actually escaped to Ghana when the lockdown yes. got heavy in <laughs> when the lockdown got heavy in Canada. They, they ran away to Ghana, and not just Ghanaians. Like a lot of like my Caribbean friends were in Ghana for three, four months. But how how were things on the ground for you during the lockdown? How did it affect your? I was gonna say business, but actually businesses because you have multiple angles. Um, how did well, it affect you? So I think, I mean, one way or the other, everyone on earth has been affected by this pandemic, but um, it also revealed something that we all know to be true amongst ourselves, which is the human to human connection is probably the most valuable connection ever because Definitely. when Definitely. they said that no man is an island, this is really what an <laughs> island would feel like if we're all living on our own. Because <laughs> we're all going mad. And for us that That's rely right. on this human to human connection as a business platform, um, that was a big hit. Because, I mean, picture this you had just come out of 2019 Afro Nation Ghana Festival. It's a big high. Big. We scored all big. the. All the right matrix built all the right connection and that was just foundation so i entered 2022 i was i mean the first few months before shutdown happened there was a conversation in multiple countries in what to do new plans new platforms and you almost got shut out in rwanda like i was i almost missed it i missed shut down by a day wow and they didn't open up for four months after that yes so for an effect, you have to cancel everything. Like you're literally living in limbo. You have yeah. such an incredible conversation that you just come out of your 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 aim is right. You're you're right. <laughs> this is where to land the punch properly and then you know take it really global and then you have to shut down. So for for us in the experience curation sector, that was a big, big hit. But here's the other side of it, you know, like T Nights, we, we all need we all discover something else around it for me that downtime was actually great because I, I put in some time family time you know you, you could be seen then then you get to know your kids very well <laughs> you're like okay so that's how you are <laughs> you discover your family like, and that was that and then obviously having to rethink models and trying to make if your business model relies on people converging into a space, you're on a bar, you're in a restaurant, you do shows, you're a promoter. How can we curate these experiences in such a way that if this thing stretches, what what do we do? Mm -hmm. It forced it forced a lot of thinking. Like it forced a lot of thinking and a lot of innovation to kind of understand how you can do these things with with people in mind and also uh, more obviously like you know you, you have to think about people's safety because before this time it was we were all chasing paper like you, you're just looking for 10,000 people how they get there is not your problem right now you may you're not looking for 10,000 people you're looking for 2,000 people that are really going to come and going to actually turn up and how you are actually going to 360 give them value so they can also give you 360 value. Mm. It's the, it's no more numbers game. I think that's one of the things that, for my sector, I'll say, it's no more numbers game. It's it's become something more of a value game. If you give the people value, you will get the numbers. But if you give the people value, you can actually get value in return. It's no more like you you just can't throw it out out there like that. So for me, that's kind of how. The pandemic's impact has been i mean talking to colleagues all around the world that are in in the same space it comes down to that everybody had to really figure out what it is that we need to do what's our balance and you know everybody was like oh yeah let's do a streaming and a virtual version listen we all know that but how are we going to do uh, clear glasses when you're sitting here uh, 7,000 miles away and i'm sitting here it's that's tough. the connection so we have to find a way to do yes. that and, you know, and I, I guess until technology, uh, technology can get us to really uh, get our avatars to touch, to touch virtually. Uh, well, we wait, we, we we will wait. Yeah, yeah. I still respect tech, but yeah, they should slow it down. They yeah. haven't solved all the problems yet. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. can I can I add to that too, um, Rudy? 
here's the thing with T Nice, Edeham's like this is what another wake up call, you know, from a publicity standpoint. I know from a producer, event producer and artist, all of us is if you didn't if you didn't have good mastery over social media, you're gonna have a lot of so that's a wake up call for a lot of musicians yes. out there. A lot of producers, a lot of event producers and a lot of artists. If you're not well, actively on so you see what I mean though, you, you could get wiped out this last year and a half, two years. Let's be realistic. Right, so sure. I think it was a wake-up call a lot for the end for people that yes. aren't on social media and, and yeah. don't know how to promote that way. They had to learn, you know. Yeah, sure. Um, no, thank you. That was some really good and varied insight from everybody on the panel. Um, I think I like what uh, Rudy was saying as far as like the fact that we we need to think about how to bring a new experience. And I think for the first half of the pandemic, it was a little bit easier because people were so thirsty. Anytime you go live, they want to see it. Yeah, yeah. But now yes. it's been maxed out. Yeah. So now we have to look, and, and this is going to take some real thinking about experience. And experience is not just duplicating what happens in real life and turning a camera on. True. And that's going to take some real innovative type of like thinking on how to, like, on how to do that. Um, and I think some some artists that had some good success, um, you know, like when uh, Trey Song, not Trey Songs, um, who am I thinking about right now? I'm thinking about uh, uh, Tory Lanes. For the first half of the pandemic, when he had his live, he was going on and they were just having fun. He was leaning on his personality. Mm -hmm. And so artists with personality, what Ida Hams is doing with his like cooking, artists with personality are able to capture a bigger piece of the pie now yeah. because it's not only about performing. Yep. It's about who who am I? You know, One of the most famous artists in the world that we know, uh, like Rihanna, has not dropped an album in how many years now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's she became a billionaire without making music in four or five years. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so we really, and, and not to put pressure on artists who just want to be pure artists, but I think this is also the time for artists to be like, what's my second thing, or my third, or my fourth? And um, I think you know it, it, it could be a good opportunity. And then when things open up, they find that they have multiple streams of revenue, right? Um, so, but thank you so much for that. I'm gonna take one question, and this is coming from online. This is coming from uh, Daniela. And the question is, I feel people don't want to spend the money um, so how do you survive with the decrease in ticket sales from live shows? So she's referring to if for a live concert, people will spend hundreds for a live show. But online, they're barely willing to pay anything. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put that out there to Rudy because you deal with this space. So, so that's, I mean, for me, that was, that's been the challenge that we're trying to solve. Um, I have ups, upsides to to this uh, to this scenario. If the Facebooks and the YouTubes and the Amazons have been able to build commerce and uh, um, businesses that purely rely on uh, online transmission, that becomes a physical place. I think is the challenge between us for creative industry folks is to find our spot. The decrease in revenue. I mean, how you go from hundreds of thousands in a week to zero, literally, because the arenas are shut down and you can't, you can't sell people an experience. But then you can't also just put on a single camera production that doesn't have depth, that doesn't have value, and for the audience to just sit intensely behind a screen just watching you with art. I took like, something from the Chinese. So the Chinese have been having these multi stream platforms that literally just hundreds of live streams in a single space doing mundane things and just plotting it to niche people. So I don't have says, I love to cook. There's an audience for a guy that cooks and that can sing to. The, mm -hmm. the challenge to, to the both of us is how do we make a, a project or a package out of those situations that we have that becomes a certain value? Am I the, is it the cooking singing show that we need to do? So I, I guess it's, 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 it comes back to that V word right now, which is unless you're giving really true value to the consumer, it, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to be left out. So it's not, I mounted a screen, 
I had a phone and then I shot a video for for it to run. I mean, look at broadcast. Hitherto, it was very itinerant, people just recording with all the pops in there. Right now, big studios have gotten behind. You need to rent a studio, get the right equipment. It, it must also sound as great as what a CBC would put together. It, I, otherwise, you're not making the cut through. So I think the challenge from a creative standpoint is it's no more stream for you to see because it's become ubiquitous. I switch on IG Live and I'm streaming and I have an audience to stream to. How do I let you pay a premium to come to a private space where we can actually give you value so you, you take value away? And there are tools to this. I think there's already there. E-commerce integrated platforms, um, uh, uh, opportunities opportunities to sell tokens, and NFTs are opening up. I mean, these are all early stage conversations, but I, I say it's about how we combine all of these moving parts into a single value. Because there's something that, whether it was live or, or it's, it's not, it's, it, uh, it's on stream, or whether it's in person, there's something that we need to know. The first to connect with our creative uh, 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 avatars is ever deeper. There's interest. The question is, how do we make it valuable so you pay for that experience? I think we need to start taking cues from even big. We are Netflix is spending twenty billion per annum to build content. Let's just not take it easy that the consumer is just going to start giving us money because we used to do mm. in-person shows and now we can't do. If it goes to stream, that's our competition. It's share of eyeballs, literally. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. who you're competing against. Yeah, yes. he's either Netflix and chilling or he's watching your content. So what? What? what the, what's the value I get? Right. Is it also when I say like, okay, you know what? Sign up for my stream, and I'll send you a token because you pay a little premium, and I can send you merch, and which is a combined fee. There's a number of models that we are all having to we, we are experimenting with, but I think that we, we we probably are there. It's just a combination of these parts mm -hmm. to actually build a formidable product. I love what um, Lookman was saying about how they found social and actually got in there and started to do shows. It's probably starting to get a little bit more, can we do in personal shows? If people are booking you for wedding audiences of 300 people, can I do that for 100 people, but on, a, on, a, on an X premium that comes with some tokens that I can give you? It's honestly, my, my mind is just wild out there because again, our model was reliant on in-person. Yes. That yeah. model Look. is broken. It can never, it's not going back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, man, can, can yeah, you like jump in on that? It's yeah, not I mean, going back. I'm just going to be able to buttress a lot of what uh, Rudy has been saying. Sorry, one second. Can you please tur turn up um, his mic, please, uh, Luke? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can, okay. can you guys hear me now? Yeah, this is good. Yeah, I'm just um, yes. going to buttress um, a lot of the things that um, Rudy has been saying. Um, I think now it's where I'm also a promoter. I've been in this, in this sector for 30 years. And um, we've all taken a lot of things for granted, especially when, you know, when you're doing physical shows. You just look for markets, you look for artists that is raining, and then you bring them into the market and make your money. It doesn't matter if your production is shit. It doesn't matter if you take them into, you know, we, 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 you know we're, we're doing all of this. But now, <laughs> it matters. And, um, <laughs> but out of that trade also comes an opportunity because it's all about giving value. What is money? Money is an exchange for value. So why would people pay if you don't give them the value? You understand? It, even if it's online or it's physical, it's all about value because now people have choice. It's not enough for you to just do anything anymore without that experience. People are paying for the experience. So if you're able to replicate that experience, okay, people will engage and they will pay. The, 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 the caveat here is, and the beauty about it is with online, you are able to access more people. So normally, I would do my business, um, let's say I, I do uh, whiskey tour, for instance, yeah, yeah. and I'll bring whiskey into Canada, and I'll be using 3,000 3, capacity venue, charging $100 per head. Now, if I'm able to still do the accurate, nice, and I can actually do a whiskey international virtual show, but well created, that will create some, because it's all about engagement. Because it's, 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 not, not, it's not just enough that it's whiskey. I mean, during the pandemic in the beginning, 
People will sit in, their, in the front of their house or in their living room and they'll be talking. And everybody was going to, they will jump in because they were bored. Now, people are not bored. Yeah. People are, we are outside now, like exactly. we keep saying, we are outside. <laughs> <laughs> we are outside. Yeah. So if you want people to come and sit down and watch a Whiskey uh, live show, it has to be properly curated. From the moment you sit down to start watching, because people will come. If, if, if somebody promotes well a Whiskey virtual concert or a Bonaboy virtual concert, people will be curious. Yes. But will people subscribe? Mm -hmm. It all depends on the experience that they think they will get. Right. You understand? Right. So right. this is I think this is now where people can capitalize. Right. Right. In as much as we're saying um we're back, I just found out that the, there's another various uh, another variant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we're dealing with right now. Oh yeah. So we all can't be too excited. Yes. Yeah, we all can't be too excited. <laughs> yeah. So and we all in all our planning, we need to still make sure that Digital transformation is paramount in our planning. Right, definitely. Whatever we're doing. Right, 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's sounding like the game is turning from marketing to technology, basically. It's because, both. Yeah. And um, let me, let me uh, jump to another angle now. Is during the pandemic, when touring slowed down, right, we have one of the biggest charting Afrobeat songs in essence, featuring Temps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This happened with no touring. This had radio uh, support, which for the longest time, we didn't even bother with radio promo as much anymore. Mm -hmm. we, everything is all digital and streaming. Mm -hmm. But this had radio because I think that people were also getting bored of their playlists. And this had radio. And this was able to, this is now number nine or, no, or number eight on the Billboard 100, which I believe is the highest for any um, African artist in any time. Mm -hmm. So this all happened, the momentum of this was built up during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. The album dropped in the middle of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. But just like you mentioned, when Wizkid dropped Made in Lagos and he did that concert that was live on uh, YouTube, Thousands of people tuned in, more they could fit into any any space. any space. So my thing is now to say, like, um, to pivot a little bit. Do you think that, um, um, and this is for anybody out there, do you think that the African music industry has peaked with something like Essence, or do you think that similar to when we thought the band and Oliver Twist was the pinnacle, and then? You know, we've had one dance, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that there's higher levels that African music could still go to internationally? Yeah. Or do you think that we have peaked? And let me know <coughs> your thinking, What, which, whichever side that you're on. Well, so back it up. I mean, for me, it's just, we're just at the beginning. <laughs> that's for me. That's my own, that's my own perspective. Um, we've been doing this. I mean, I've been... I've been you know, front runner of this um, old uh, Afrobeat thing for the last you know, 15 years. And we are just finally at that breaking point. That's why I feel. And uh, if anybody thinks that we've seen money in Afrobeat, no. It's just about to start right now. And you can see the cool kids coming out right now. Mm -hmm. The cool kids coming out right now, they are mainstream kids. Their sound is you know, appealing to everybody. Polished and Everybody. So mm -hmm. I feel, you know, I feel the business is just about to really start. Right, right, right. Um, and not to mention the artist who came out just before, and in this case, I'm speaking about like Nigerian artists like Omale or like Buju. They came out just before the pandemic. This should have killed their career, but instead, it blew them up. And so even um, even artists like uh, 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 Idama, who I believe has like left us, but I mean. He got signed to like Universal during the like, pandemic. pandemic, so things were happening. But I wonder what you think about that, you know, like Rudy. Where, where do you think yeah. there's do you think there's more room? Oh, I I, I think we've now discovered the cheat codes. Yes, properly. Please yes. tell me a few cheat codes, now, Rudy. Yes, <laughs> now, now, now we have we have, have the. I think we've discovered the formula. Yeah. Let's not forget that Thames is literally just what. From a global perspective, what twenty-four months? Mm -hmm. Thames is already, already hitting spots yep. in her young career that half the people that have been in for a decade I don't need. are still trying to scratch. She That's made right. it to the Drake album. I think we've discovered the cheat codes, and and I, I, let me even speak on a broader range, right? 
the combination of building an African African music, Africa sound driven festival that highly successful in literally lands that were turning it out. The first Afro Nation festival was in Portugal. It wasn't yeah. in England, which is kind of like the European bastion for the whole Afrobeat movement. They literally knew new country, new different language, and literally took it there and it worked. And then we're heading to the Americas with with, with Puerto Rico, which was literally what eight thousand, wait, nine thousand tickets sold at a time of at a time of cancellation. Right. I think it's just a watershed moment for Af African music. And to anybody that's in the value chain, this is really the time because we found the formula. If talents like David O. Berna are making it into mainstream media, they are literally mainstream media presence. I mean, I, I, I was glad and I was blessed to actually have seen part of, you know, from the back, actually, uh, from the back room of the whole Debant era and how they tried to play. And what they spent and the amount of work that they put in, this is the payoff line. Mm -hmm. This yes. is actually the payoff time. So for me, this is really just the start of it. Like, I can't wait for the kind of plans that Jews has for for uh, African Music Week and AIM Festival and all of that in person. It's just that sweet time that we waited. And honestly, nothing can stop <clears throat> something whose time has come. Right. I, I'm waiting for the Madison Square Garden seven nights sold out yep all african afrobeat yep. acts it's there I, yep. I think it's just a matter of time that somebody actually just takes the risk and does that but it's rigged and and and, and for everybody in the value chain like this is where we double we double down on <clears throat> everything we've been doing this is where this is where i can see look i, I don't think wiz has actually scratched the surface of what he wants to do because Wiz is it's I, when I look at him I see dollar signs like I, I'm just asking him, how much match can we do with <laughs> right right Wiz like yeah we could be doing a million units yeah. we could be moving in a million units across yeah <laughs> that's how I see so I, I think from no, a, no, a tiny perspective we found we found it we found we found it right right all right I'll, I'll just add to this I just think you know just coming from a label perspective somebody that worked at a label um you know, it, it's true. We haven't even, we haven't even touched the surface yet um, when it comes to that for, you know, beats and stuff like that. Um, what I'll say is that, um, like, you know, uh, Rudy was saying, you know, if somebody would take the chance, I think there's something that I've been telling Jules about that, you know, he got to think about even strategic partnership because with the Whisk Kid and, and, and him being successful, Burnham, they're all actually thought about it and did strategic partnership with the labels, mm -hmm. you know, that's the machine. So with the pandemic happening and everything going down, you need somebody that's going to front that money for radio promo and, and individuals and all that. And that's what they did. And everybody, they caught everybody's attention. That song blew up within the next three months. It was out of here. Like, so for me, and that also birthed Tim's career, right? Like now she's really doing some big stuff. Um, so strategic partnership, I think, is 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 what people are now starting to really think mm -hmm. about uh instead of thinking the labels are their enemies they think like hey we could partner with them and make money together and when you do that they're like a bank you know they'll give you whatever you need to really take it to the next level and i think that's where uh african music right now has to really look at like who can i connect with who can i really plug in with and really exercise and execute this vision or this music that the world needs to hear you know what i'm saying so that's why i think people are now starting to figure it out like hmm mm. we could team up and it could be a success because you know this kid now sony looking at him like oh this guy's amazing we need a next one from him mm. you know that's so right. that's just what I'll, I'll add to it right yeah 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 that's yeah let me add to that too. yes i'll take that uh just to even connect it to this conversation t nice because what you said that's the that is the future right there or or should i say i mean uh, there's four words uh you know Sinead, uh, because we've worked on stuff in the past, but, you know, the four words I say, Africa is the future, okay, period. That's just what it is. Now, that's coming from me. My background is Jamaican, but uh, Jamaica is obviously a very Afrocentric country. You know, that's just what we do. That's how we get down. We're always looking for ways, creative ways to connect to the motherland. Um, now, the thing is, 
even with Edahams, who I guess maybe his connection got lost. But the thing is, how Edahams came over to here is just to, you know, just to kind of connect to what T Nice was saying is he's going through the universal music system. You mm -hmm. understand? So he has a company, he and his partners called Grafton Entertainment. And how it came on my in my inbox, you know, because Universal Music is a client of mine. You feel me? Mm. So, so I, I I didn't know Edans. You know what I mean? But that, that's what happened. Yeah, it came. It's coming through the Universal Music system because he now signed to Universal Music in Nigeria, and then that now came over to Universal Music Canada. You, you see what I'm saying, though, mm -hmm, right? So, mm -hmm. so this is the type, those are the types of strategic partners that you need to do. Also, too, I would say is as far as the whole online thing is, we still have yet to see, let's say, something like a versus, like an Afro Beats versus, you know, like Burna Boy versus Wizkid or whatever. Um, that hasn't quite happened yet. So, um, there, there, so there's a long way to go. We had one good dance hall one, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Beanie Man mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Bounty Killer, right? That, and that was Beanie, yeah, was Bounty Killer, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that was fantastic. And that sort of woke up the African diaspora. So it's something bigger than rap and R and B. That dance hall one is arguably one of the best ones, you know. No so doubt. Imagine a Wizkid Burna Boy versus. That would be ridiculous. That would light up the continent. That would light up the world. You know what I mean? So we're still this. It's Africa is the future. <laughs> Period. That's right. It, yeah. Right. And just to 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 add to what Dalton just um, just mentioned about that, it shows to all of us in the value chain that we just have to be innovative, because there's no reason why this hasn't happened. We all know this was this this will be a good deal. This will this should happen. I'm sure the artists feel it should happen, but why hasn't it happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand, and that's where we, that are in the in the business and in, in the value chain, needs to be a bit more innovative and bringing all these kind of ideas. Right. Out. And also the, the investors and the sponsors need to start seeing that there's a new way of doing things. Definitely. It's not until I bring a thousand people or two thousand people into an arena before you then sponsor exactly, my event. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And uh, just to uh, like jump in, because me coming from the side of like super freak and like gumbo for the past like 10, you know, you know, like 12 years. Initially, when we were pushing African music, the resistance was not that the people, you know, that, uh, uh, that the people were not um, interested. The biggest resistance was more from the machine, like side of it. And so, but we are at a point where the machine has actually caught up to what the people have always known. One, yeah. And so when we, when we're talking about alternative revenue streams and we're looking at a ticket and we're saying oh we can't sell as many tickets because we're in a lockdown this is actually the time for innovative sponsorship deals because you the sponsor the car company the bank you will pay for the tickets for people to come watch the show because if i have whiskey or burner boy or Tams on the stage they are speaking to an audience that you don't have a clue about. They are speaking to millennial young Africans. You can spend $100,000 on a billboard on the Gardener for three months, or you can give us 30 grand to get in front of, of this. Of this exactly. So I think that on the business side, some work has to be done to actually sensitize the marketing world, the 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 like media buying world to say there is a new market that you are not speaking to. Right. And if you want to speak to them, these are their icons, these are their avatars, you know. And so it's something that like um, already happens in um, a lot of other like genres and it's, 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 it's like, you know, it's like subsidized by like Mazda is like sponsoring this mm -hmm. or like whatever. Mm -hmm. It's actually why the tickets are not Five hundred dollars for a festival that you know cost fifteen million dollars to put together. If you divide it by the people attending, the ticket should be way more than that. But you know all the things like the Lollapaloozas, heavy ad dollars. I'm talking millions. So we ourselves, especially those on the business, we need to spend some more time in the boardrooms, balancing that out so that we can do those kind of um, like festivals. <laughs> I mean, for me, yeah, um, a, a point to add to that, I also think from the production side of things, um, one of the things that is limiting our growth and our progress is our standards. You know, we're all saying Afrobeat is going there, is going there, is going there. If we're not careful, we won't be part of the value chain that will monetize it. It's already happening. It's happening right now. <laughs> and why? I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, taking, I'm not taking this from away from any of the artists. Yes. It's, okay. it's an evolution of standards, okay? Yeah. I am a young artist. I've just started. 
I'm working with all these promoters. They're doing as they like. I have no choice. I'm trying to get out there. I will work with their deal. But when my standard starts getting to a certain level, I'm start becoming conscious of my brand. I don't want to go sing in a hall with a, you know, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I yeah. start getting conscious of that. Right. And that's what's happening. So a lot of our artists are moving up, but the industry is not moving with them. At least the industry being supported by us. So if we're not careful, that's another thing. Because we can't stop the engine. The train no, has no, started no, moving no. already. The machine but is... who is driving the train? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That is very, very good. And, and and yes. I think this is one of the most powerful things we need to pay attention to. Yes. The show side of this whole conversation is already proving to be attractive as a product. Here is the server that we need to fire to the business people. And that's that's all of us here. Our standards need to evolve to find the right nose to plug into the machine. Right. Or we will be left behind. We will be. The machine yes. has done that before. Yep. It yes. took black music, turned it, gave it rock, turned it away from black people, made tons of money and never never credited never credited the early pioneers. Yep. Here's a, here's something that we need to guard against which is we're going to be part of this future and the thing is this it's not you know I, I like militantism and all of that but reality is reality the machine comes it's a hydra yep one way or the other the machine will have his way now i'd rather play with the machine to get a piece of the pie because i'm talking 1.2 billion people and growing yep with a massive taste um, with newly um, uh, minted uh, middle class who are having much more disposal. Forget all the things, the poverty fund that you've been sold up in the West about one pound will save whatever. <laughs> There's one pound will save somebody in America today. There's homeless people there. Yep. But, and, and you know, that was one of the things that in 2019, a bunch of people that was just the first time touching down in Ghana for Afro Nation was like, wait a minute, is this a crime? Like, where do you think you're going? Like, what? Ula, 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 monkeys on trees. Listen, we have zoos. Don't forget, you're here for this festival because you loved the experience of, or the idea of it. I think as business people and standardization, it's a big deal. Like, yo, the sound needs to be processed right. It needs to be mastered right. Yep. It needs to be put in the right format. You yep. can't be submitting submitting EPKs like you used to. Like, we, can, we should stop that thing. There's nothing like an African standard and a global standard. There's one <laughs> no, single standard no. that a machine recognizes. That's right. And until until us business people and the show people actually combine to understand that that standard is for everyone, we could be left behind. And for, for me, that's always a danger with mm -hmm. all of these things. No, definitely. And uh... like, that's always always the danger of all of these things. Where literally, if we don't if we don't take care, that part of our burgeoning culture will be owned by somebody else that so it's right and so that's where like, I'm, I'm looking forward to the nigerian promoters like i talk to people on a daily basis guys ways has not taught africa properly ways hasn't been on the road 30 days going from city every single city which is literally every city in africa is like what two hours three hours except when you're going down south which is six hours from west africa yeah like he could be on the road for but we haven't done that yeah but we need to get the standards right. Otherwise, Sony figures it out and Live Nation figures it out and the, the game is up. No, yeah, yeah. And, 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 uh, and I mean, let's talk in the present. Um, as far as being like left out, it's already happening. If you take a look at our top artists, if you take a look at not just from the label side, but from the management side and from the booking side, right? So people like myself and Luke, who use personal connections to book artists, right? Sometimes at a loss, actually, after ev everything is said and done. But we help to develop a local market. However, when they get established and they end up going to the big booking agency, to the big management company, what's, what ends up happening is that a date will be announced in the city happening at a major um, venue and no local promoters are involved and don't even need to be because the artists are now that big. Mm -hmm. Something that could never happen three or four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about standards, I think it's really, really important that when we build a relationship with an artist, that we show them that they don't have to go 
to outside the community to well, get the standard? Well, um, we have to understand that um, artists are business people too. Yeah. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think where we have the where we miss it is the let's take Canada for instance. How many promoters are collaborating? We don't have individually. We can't compete with Live Nation. Collectively, we can. But are we thinking that? Um, somebody mentioned African tour. One individual can probably going to find it difficult to pay with to take with them on an African tour. But there are a bunch of solid promoters in, all those in places, Africa definitely. that why aren't they collaborating and doing a mega tour? So I feel, yeah, in our industry today, which is one of the things I promote the most, collaboration is the new oil. And until we start collaborating in a lot of things that we're going to do, we're going to miss out this Afrobeat thing. I hear you. Collaboration, that was my next thing that I wanted to like, like touch upon. Where Afrobeats is now, dancehall has already been there. Yeah. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, like 20 years ago, right? And so, and, um, you know, we have some, like, Jamaican like labels like a uh, VP like records that were a very big a very big you know like part of that. My like question is, um, do you think that there can be an African answer to that? In a sense that we know that all the major African artists are assigned to first their their own label first, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. But you know, if we could have uh, you know, do you think there's an opportunity for like a pan African label? to be able to take advantage of some of these like economies of scale? Or do you think that the only, you know, it's it's just, you know, you have your Davido and like DMW and then he's signed to Sony and then you have Burner Boy with his outsiders and he's signed to like Warner. Like, do you think there's any opportunity to have a local or an African label that is actually, that has continental presence, you know, outside? Because we don't have any label that has a real presence in both Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa. You know, they're all boutique labels. What do you think is like stopping that? Because you were talking about collaboration, and I I'm talking about you know the fact that it really grows the pie, whether it is happening on the music side or it's happening on the like business side. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Uh, why do you think that really hasn't happened on that level yet? Um, I guess it's the industry maturity. Um, the industry has grown based on, you know, the industry is just getting more matured. And uh, you can see now in the last three years, it's only in the th last three years I can say, you can now see better collaboration happening. Right. You right. know, um, you can see the older ones collaborating with the younger ones, and that is soon going to start happening with the ecosystem too. Okay. Because one thing we all realized is the consumer demand is forever getting increasing. You know, and um, it's only when we collaborate together we are able to be able to afford this continuously and continually. Right. You understand? Right. So it's inevitable. Right. In Africa, why is there nobody doing that right now? Maybe there's is nobody's focus yet, maybe. Right. Um, right. I know the funds are there to do it. Right. The talents are there to make it happen. Um, but yeah, you're right. Nobody's really tried to do that. I know em Empower was trying to do something similar. S yes, and I'm sorry that I didn't like mention them because yeah. em Empower should yeah, be commended for trying, trying to, to do something have that kind of ecosystem, system, yeah. pan African, pan African, digital based. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. No, you're so right. Empower, so Empower uh, Mr. Did Easy. That, yeah. yeah, and and, I, and the more we Africans start to understand each other, the more we start to work with each other, then this kind of things can start to happen. Right. Right. Very, 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 very good points. Dalton, I'm going to draw you in from a hip-hop angle. Um, what kind of lessons do you think that, because um, we've seen the signing like Frenzy ha happening in, in Afrobeats now. It, it's happened in hip-hop. Um, hip-hop has, hip-hop is maybe uh, 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 30, no, 40 years of like <coughs> recorded music now, right? And hip hop was supposed to be a fad as the way people saw it, but it's 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 now has its DNA in every single music that happens, including Afro beats. So, um, from from your time in the industry, what are the lessons that you think that Afro beats artists, African artists, um, can learn so that they can have the same type of longevity, but also so that they don't get burned. Because we also know that some of those deals that hip-hop artists were signing in the beginning were bum-ass deals. So what, you know, what can we learn? We don't have to get burned to learn 
what kind of how can we take that history and just skip all the bad mistakes and just arrive yeah i think i think it it comes back down to so a couple things one thing i would say is you know the artistic integrity um because it's so high amongst um uh you know african music you know afro beats now and MPN, like there's a bunch of obviously music genres we can talk about i think with dance hall and reggae is um how it broke out and and continues to break out and sort of have this big uh you know engage the uh critical masses across the globe is um it's certainly like innovation um it's high artistic integrity and that's happening uh, in the african music scene and and that's why I, when i say africa is the future but w- w- so what i'm saying essentially is you know some of the most interesting exciting and intriguing um articulations of contemporary music it, it's coming from africans you know what i mean um and when i and when i say that i don't even mean whether you know let's say for example t nice you know he's working with some major figures hip hop r and b um, happens to be continental african cardi b whatever um, it doesn't even I, i'm not even so much saying that it has to be the um the sort of africa the music genres that fall underneath african music but right, right you know some right. of the like for example we have artists here that are you know growing up in toronto born here um there's a there's a rapper uh he's a rapper and vocalist named toby I don't know if you guys know him. Toby, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Toby. Toby. Yeah, yeah. And Toby, he's Nigerian, but the thing is, you see in his music, he's blending Afro beats and hip hop and soul and R and B, and and for me, that's some of the future of music as well. You know, the guy's proudly Nigerian, but the guy is like he's a hip hop head, mm-hmm. and then he does collaborations with big rappers and you know J- Jazz Cartier, who's you know one of my clients out of Canada, living in LA, and and uh, and and so so I think that kind of having it's having that vision, you know, to. Uh, just to echo what uh, some of T-Nice and Rudy are saying, but uh, the business aspects and collaboration with major corporations, I mean, that's the corporations, I mean, that's the future. Yeah, and that's what, and that's what the hip-hop generationers, they knew from the jump, you know, um, rap, hip-hop generations, they're raging capitalists, you know what I mean? So if you listen to Jay-Z, to whatever you're into, it doesn't matter, you know, most of like, not most of that's for example, but they understand big business, you know what I mean? Right. They're, they're, they're trying to generate some major revenues, and what that means is, hey, okay, I'm going to be a global ambassador with the Brooklyn Nets and, you know, Drizzy, the Toronto Raptors and branding and clothing lines. They're all about big business. You know what I mean, despite the fact that rap comes from, you know, the South Bronx and before that Jamaica, and we know its origins, you know, it's black people of African descent. We invented it, we originated, but then it's just like, okay, we have all of this cachet. Now we got to turn that cachet into cash. So that's how rappers are wired. I'm a hip hop generation. That's how I'm wired. How do we generate revenues, different revenue streams? Um, but I'm still proudly, you know what I mean? I'm black, I'm a Jama- you know, Jamaican background of African descent, but it's about biz- it's about business, you know what I mean? So once the, the other thing too, I just want to add quickly is also, you know how in Canada, for example, when we talk about African music, it seems to be still very much on a community-based kind of level. Um, so I noticed that whenever, let's say big concerts happen, let's say it's the WizKids or Thames, I think it's like going to be Live Nation and the big co- companies that are handling all of the big concerts here. Um, so I'm hope, looking to see a day, hopefully so- shortly, where local promoters, you know, in Canada and Toronto and Ottawa are reaping some of those rewards, you know. So whenever a big, you know, Thames does a concert here, it's like it's a collaboration with Live Nation and local area promoters, right? Uh, because we know the culture. We invented the culture. We are the culture. So we should be benefiting fiscally from the culture. But I think there's a bit of a disconnect there here in Canada. That's what I see happening. Yeah, I Dalton. think Edenham is back too. I'd love to hear he's back on. We got him back on. Edenham too. Well, Dalton, I need to correct. I need to correct that though. This is the first time Life Nation is bringing any of the guys to to, to Canada. Before that, um, it before was before that it was all this guy. myself yeah. and the other promoters in yeah. the city doing it. And um, yeah. even even this time around, they're only doing two cities. All the other cities is still local promoters. So, um, just yeah. to just to shed right. Shed but you know, out. his point was that. Um, <laughs> but I get, I get his, his point. point was that they shouldn't be doing it without us. That's what he's trying to say. And they are not yes. doing it yes. without us. Right. So yeah. you would be involved I in the life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Involved. Right. We right. Right. Involved. Yeah. Because my yeah. Own, yeah. my yeah. my, my yeah. own yeah. point yeah. is. Yeah. That was my point. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That was my. Yeah, my point is is exactly. It's not so much no. The community has been holding it down forever. Yes. We already know this. I'm just saying, oh. if they want to mess with our music, Live Nation and the, the major corporations, they need to go through us. That's my point. Yes. <laughs> That's Period. it. And yeah. Uh, and, 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 and and look, man. I, I before, sorry, I dropped off. You, you were making a point. You talked about the fact that, um, okay, these are big machine players, and maybe we can't compete with them. Actually, I I beg to differ. Here's where I think that it could happen. So we've already been building, Africans have been living on a community level 
for thousands of years. Correct. We, you, when, when you were born, you were not born into a house. You were born into, into a community. So all your sensibilities were shaped by the community. If you look at the challenges of black people in America, it's the same. As soon as they managed to break that community down, that's when they got people to. And the thing is, people are shaped by the communities that they grow in. People are shaped by the... I think that is really where it is. How do we take this community and turn it into a chain link which and a value chain that can deliver? I'm sitting here in Accra. Lukman is in, in Toronto. Chinedo is in Toronto. Jules is in Toronto. t is sitting there. What is it that we can put together that creates a pathway for me to deliver them value on that side because they've seen a market? How is it that I can shape this without necessarily waiting for the big player to come mm -hmm. into the space and that's where i think from an african so i always say this we when I, whenever i'm talking to audience i'll say the show people and the business people need to think right the, the show people and the business people as soon as we can align you're sitting there with access to venues and spaces mm -hmm. right um just so one comment that I, I got from the the live stream was somebody saying that they think there's a lack of the right facilities for an Af for an artist in Africa to be on the road every day. Um, I guess they're talking about like real concert halls and stuff to be on the road every day. Um, how do you feel about that? I, I, I differ. I differ with that. I just think there needs to be better planning. Um, um, depends on the uh, depends on the artist. But there are facilities, but right. it's lack of planning. That's really our key thing. We're not, we, don't, we need to develop a structure. You know, and what um, Rudy was saying, I think he didn't catch most of my conversation before he, yes, he dropped off. Right. Yeah. I, I wasn't saying that Live Nations were a big threat, but I said they will capitalize on the opportunity yes. if, if we don't, don't have a structure in place. Yes, you yes, know, and yes. I think that's where we're missing. Yeah. So, if Live Nation decide now they want to start going into Africa, or AEG decide they want to start going into Africa, they will be able to do exactly what this person has just said. Right. Why? And they're not going to be there to build no venue. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. You're, yeah. no, you're exactly right. And actually, they're, um, if they move in, what they will do is they will employ people that could have been partners, which is a different type of you know, like value chain, which is way lower. You know what I mean? So like it's like um like you know you know like for example you take a look at at, at the idea of mo moving into a, a new market where you have no footing, mm. you can collaborate with a local player that already has that mm -hmm. market intelligence, you can collaborate or you can simply employ, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know so when you talk about how we have to build up we have to build up so that we we can be a partner in the process yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's about that collab what's that collab you see. Our biggest problem, like Rudy was saying, is the business community right. and the, our ecosystem. They are not aligned. Right. Mm -hmm. I still cannot go and sit down in front of my financial investor and say, I need $10 million. Mm -hmm. yeah. But time and time over and time, I've shown that if you invest $10 million to the right, to the right structure, you are going to make crazy money. Right. <laughs> because the right. return on investment in this business, well done, it's high. Right. Right. You know, but until that happens, until that business sector and the financial sector believes in the industry, right. they don't really believe in the business side of because they don't understand the business side right. of things. Right. But it's getting there. Right. Um, more people are getting more educated. Um, the bankers are seeing this account of these guys and the kind of money they're turning over. Right. <laughs> so I guess right. everybody's paying a bit. It's, it's getting a, a bit better. Right. Where I think we need to do, like myself and Rudy and, and, and our our know our peers is that standardization improving right. standard let 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 what our delivery be able to match anywhere right. let us be able to bid for a Cardi B show right. let us be able to bid for a Drake show right. once we're not on that level we can you can compete right right got it look man you've just you've just you've just put a smile on my face like this is this is the anthem these days you know and and Permit me to, let me put a few things out there. Like, yeah. one of the key metrics for me from an Afro-Nation Ghana perspective was the production side and what we can assemble it together. I'm proud to say that we did that 97% Ghanaian. Yeah. We never imported any gear from it. I literally went to 40 warehouses. It was a Lego operation. You mm. pick here, you pick that, you pick that, to create that spectacle that sits there. 
and and it was for me a demonstration to the international community and even the local community listen guys if you guys align on what you are putting into the ecosystem we could bring global citizen here yeah. and we don't need to fly anything in yeah. and the thing is this we will be creating empowerment economic empowerment in the system that's right i'm proud to see one of the suppliers that we work with like he saw a lot of the need so much that right after he went to say someone's like listen i'm gonna bid for this thing i need investment he literally just put two con two forty foot of containers of gear into the system like because i've seen the path that if we have these things in place we can unlock it it's it's typically how everything is done in the west build it they will come yeah. you have to build it you create the spectacle they will come yeah. build vegas people will bring their money every day create an economic value somewhere people will bring their money it's the same mentality that we need to get in from an african perspective that we need to build the systems and the money will follow us it's true like yeah. the saddest part is talking to this whole entertainment ecosystem it's a thing because look there's something that I'm sure uh, Ida Hams would, uh, would, 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 would align to this. In Ghana, we call it bread and butter issue. Everything is broken down to bread and butter, which means basic necessities. Omo, uh, we've been eating bread and butter for how many years now? We have to start talking about caviar. <laughs> On top of the bread. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me just like jump in uh, uh, a question from just, I want to hear from the artist, you know, like perspective. Um, Ida Ham, why is it, uh, not why is it, is it important for you to have an impact in North America? Um, you know, I mean, Africa is a pretty big, uh, like, music market, and, and so is Europe. But I'm just, I'm just, you know, like, curious, is it important for you to have an impact in North America, and, and why? Yeah, um, in fact, um, um, the music is going, is going crazy, like, especially the Afrobeat, like, it's going very, very crazy, and we need um, different um, audiences. We need different people, you know, to you know, vibe, to, you know, to buy our sound. And you know, of course, you're making money from the music. I mean, you have you know, different people, different religion, different um, um, and people coming, you know, to buy your music. Of course, it's a welcome, it's a welcome development. I would, I would, I would, I would even, but it it has this, its own challenges, like you know, trying to reach out to break into the and Europe or North America and this market because um, um, before the likes of um, Universal came in or what's it called Sony Music and the rest of them we we have um, we, we we have challenge of you know um, distribution um, promoting your song and you know you being being physical present there you know to you know promote plugging your songs and all that but um, I think. Um, me, we, we've been able to um, um, navigate through that and challenges and all that. But um, you having new audiences, and for me, it's way, 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 way better. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Right. At the end of the day, you're making money. Right, mm. right. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see that importance of having, um, uh, obviously, um, a bigger audience. Um, I was curious from the point of view of, like, you know, you want to have an audience in the states, in Europe. Um, I'm curious to, you know, if the rest of Africa is on your mind, because I remember when I mean P Square made tens of millions of dollars, and they refused to tour the states a lot because they said the money they were being offered to come and do a show in the states was one fifth of what they would get from doing a show in Kenya or you know in Nigeria. So the African market itself is a uh, 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 um, you know is a lucrative you know like market as well. So I'm wondering like whether it's through what you're doing with your um, your label you know um, like Grafton or with, you know like Universal, if if you know if the rest of Africa is important uh, for you as well. So like Ghana. Kenya, South Africa. Of course, it, what the most important thing is having you know the right channel, you know, connect mm. because um, there are, there are, there are stuff you do that you don't have idea of you know okay this how much you paid and well, of course if, if there's transparency like my team I believe my team whatever I do with them 
there's always um, transparency, whatever they want to invest in, whatever they want to, you know, plug into my music to whatever place. So I always see and we, 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 we carry each other along. And um, the most important thing, like I said, is transparency. And for me, performing in Kenya, um, Tanzania, whichever uh, African country, like, you know, you, you can't you can't come I, although we are we are still uh, brothers you know we are very close like if they understanding each other it wouldn't be that you know difficult but i'll prefer you know people that don't you not know, understand my language people that don't understand my culture vibe into my music than people that actually hmm. you know understand my culture you understand i i see value i see i see value in that very very much Right. For whether Africa, whether Europe, you know, as long as you're making money and there's transparency and, you know, of course, if you have the connection and the right. channel, you know, to do it right, right now. Right. Okay. That's, uh, that's really good to hear. I think a lot of like Nigerian artists um, have also been able to spread basically their music through our collaborations. So like Yami Alade would drop her song in three languages, you know, Swahili and French, et cetera. Um, so I think, um, you know, it's, it's really good to uh, keep that um, in mind. We are gonna like wrap up soon, but there's something that I wanted to run by um, everybody on the panel. To start with, thank you guys so much for uh, being here. This has been a really, really engaging. I know we could go on for like many, 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 many more hours, but, what I wanted to ask, and this is for the people who it applies to, um, is where does Canada specifically fit into all of this? Are we bringing anything new to the table? Are we just a market for uh, consumers? Are we able to produce as well? Basically, where, where do we fit? I know where the UK fits because the UK is very, very, uh, um, was very, very influential to this thing sound going global. I know that it, the US is like the holy grail because they have the numbers. Where does Canada fit and what can we uniquely bring to the table? Maybe I'll let Dalton go first. Dalton. Before, before I'll see my own perspective. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what Canada is bringing to the table is uh, just like Africa is the future, um, Canada is also the future. And I'll explain what I mean. If two of the biggest, I mean, as Chinedo mentioned, like I'm uh, teaching a course uh, at uh, Ryerson University or X University in Toronto, I'll be teaching in January. And it's a course, a university course about Drake and the weekend. Okay. So if we want to better understand what Canada is bringing, mo a lot of the biggest artists in the world are from Canada. Okay. So the Drake and the Weeknd, uh, you know, they don't do Afrobeats. They don't do, but what I, they 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 collaborate with Afrobeats artists, obviously, and mm -hmm. they are influenced mm -hmm. by Afrobeats beats artists, as you could see in their music and their collaborations. So what is the what what so what is the difference? So so Canada again, because we're kind of a very futuristic kind of city, you know, Toronto, where I'm based, that's the most multicultural city in the world, you know. Right? So when I say Toronto is the future, that's what it is. So if I could put somebody on to, you know, let's say T Nice has some productions and he's African and he's in Toronto, the most multicultural city in the world, um, Ida Hams, if I could put them on to his single problem in Toronto, where Drake and The Weeknd are from, and it's the most multicultural city in the world, and there's a ton of money in Canada, that's what Canada's bring to the table. In Toronto, where we are based, this is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. <laughs> that's just a fact, right? Also, Toronto is the fourth largest city in North America. Okay, That's so right. when Afrobeats are when Afrobeats artists want to penetrate North America, they have to go to New York, they go to LA, they go to Toronto, right? You see what I mean? Like, yeah, we're the fourth largest city in North America. So that's what Canada's bringing to the table is we have um, big influencers here. We have a big influence on the globe, and uh, some of the biggest performing artists just happen to be here. So you see what I mean? So so it's Canada is it's a Canada is also a very interesting place too because it doesn't treat um, black music in the way it should, which is very problematic, right? Um, but yes. that's a whole other conversation. Yes, <laughs> you yes, know yes, what I'm yes. saying? But yeah. but Canada, Africa is the future, and Canada sits just a couple notches below that right. because of this diversity. And in when I'm here in Toronto, I bump into people when I talk about the diaspora. Is I have collaborators and colleagues that are from Senegal, from Cameroon, 
uh, tons of Nigerians, obviously, Ghanaians, like, that's Toronto, though. You know what I mean? So we're bringing this kind of global Afro-diasporic view as somebody like myself who's into Marcus Garvey and Jamaican culture. That's what I love about Toronto is that I could collaborate with Africans from 30 different countries in right. Toronto. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And right. then take our stuff out to the world. Right. Mm. Uh, look. Yeah, um, I totally agree. I think one of the edge we have is that cultural, um, most of the kids grew up in such a diverse cultural um, environment, and so they've been able to pick up quite a lot of culture. And if you see the music coming out of Canada, mostly they're fused music. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of fusion music is coming out of Canada. The weekend is African. Yeah. For instance, in the you right. know, Eritrean, right. you know, um, but because they grew up out here, yeah. they, you know, so that's one of the beauty of Canada. But interestingly, um, ID Hams is a is a is an artist, is an Afrobeat artist. Um, I've been doing a bit of research and the last eighteen months in terms of streaming numbers, right? If he goes b on his back end and looks at his streaming numbers, especially on Apple and Spotify, you will see Canada consistently with most of the major Afrobeat artists have been sitting in four, three, four, or five. Ida, Ida, Ida Ham, has that's that been true. your experience? In terms that's of true. That's very true. three, very four, very or five. True. And yeah. that is a clear indication of what Canada Impact. represents. Impact. Because when you take the U.S. away, the next place is going to be the U.K., then it's always a competition between France and Canada for number three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, probably, right. Yeah. So we are a small <laughs> country, but how are we being able to generate such high impact streaming? Hmm. Right. So it's uh, uh, so um, Canada basically punches above its its weight. Um, you know, we have a lot of super fans of the genre here. Super fans, a lot of um, immigration. Canada right. Is one of the people that That's true. Very, very open. African, I know. I know. African good immigrants that's this is another true. thing this you is know true. african yeah. high qualified immigrants so these right. are people that understand streaming right right <laughs> right you know right and so. i mean canada in the next five ten years also in terms of the like demographics you know uh is gonna is like changing so there's yes. gonna be even more like west africans which means yeah. even more influence on the direction of music in canada which also makes it easier um, we have to we have to definitely always acknowledge that the the a big success of, of, of African global African music because African music has always been there on the continent it's not invented in the West but the 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 big explosion of it is a direct um, result of a collaboration from the continent and the like diaspora you know so when we look at even some of the um, um, uh, some of the the earliest hits and people like Dubanj who returned from the UK or Tiwa or even going the other way even going the other way around it's important for an artist to have impact on the continent but when it crossed over to the like diaspora we we make them even bigger artists so with that in mind i also wanted to say there's something i think that canada brings to the table and i'm surprised uh, Dalton didn't in, you know you know like mentioned this was canada um, has an official um, government support for artists, yeah. Yeah. which does not exist in many other countries, mm -hmm. which means that um, you know an emerging artist um, has it a little bit easier to get started with support. Obviously, if your music is not uh, great, it's not going to go anywhere. But the idea is that in order for Canada to compete with the states that dominates everything the Canadian government actually puts money towards supporting. Yep. So any Afrobeat artists, um, African artists from anywhere in Canada listening to us right now should know this is your right. You should go yep. and look, whether it's through Factor, yep. whether it's through CM, all organizations, Toronto Arts Council, Ontario Arts Council. Canadian Council for exactly. Arts. Exactly. You know, fact, which uh, which is our sponsor by the way uh, yeah canadian sponsor, council for the I'll, arts I'll shout out to them exactly actually. shout out to them <laughs> um you know they are invested in supporting yeah. which is putting money where their mouth is so it's up to us to connect that yeah how can we be the hottest genre in hottest not to say the biggest but the hottest genre in the world and to still not have a lot of canadian exports i think that's the next level and with artists like your daughter Tome uh, coming onto the scene, I think we we need to now begin to make that link back to the continent because yeah. that that's the that's I mean that's the cheat code. I mean that's you know? one of the reasons why we're 
Um, our next focus now is actually going to, going to be spending time in the continent. There you go. Um, there you go. Because yeah, she's released a few projects. Right. And it was all during pandemic, so we couldn't travel. <laughs> right. Right. You know, so we're not going to go, go back to do that. Just um, to quickly buttress what you were saying about the Canadian government, um, for all artists out there in Canada. Um, shout out to Factor, shout out to Canada uh, Heritage Canada, Canadian uh, Arts Council. They are ready and willing to support you all. You just need to reach out. I mean, just a few months ago, the Canadian government, um, via Factor, issued out a, a fund up to $100,000 for artists that to come out. We know you are up and coming. Nobody will buy your ticket. Okay, fine. But we want you to come out, come collect money, go rent venue, open the venue up for free, and come perform for people. You understand I me? Mean, how much more support do you want than oh. that? But guess what? Not, wow. many, not, many, not many people even went to apply. The money was left uh, on the table. Not many when people <laughs> went to apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually started a clubhouse, Instagram, and all kinds of initiative just to get this information into our community. Yeah. The money was exhausted, but how many from our community yeah. benefited from it? Yeah, yeah. So we also need to participate. We all come into this community that is willing to help us, willing to support us, but we don't integrate yeah. with the community. We don't even understand what's happening in the community. What's going on? What's going on? It's true. It's true. <laughs> you know? It is very true. Um, sorry, guys, that we have to wrap up. We could have yeah. gone on for much longer, but this was a really, really good conversation. Um, I'm going to thank everybody who's on the panel. Luke, man, thank you for no, everything a, that you do in the city. I uh, just want to say, you know, that you are um, appreciated. Thank you. And thank that you. Uh, a lot of us have, like, benefited from not just your knowledge, but also your your uh, support. So thank you so much. Um, Dalton, with us on Zoom, but also in uh, Toronto, thank you for coming. Thank you for all the work that you do for black music in general. Um, thank you for being a, a Pan-Africanist. Um, you know, you're one of those guys that always, always is looking for a way to make that connection between where we're at, where we're from, and where we're going. So mm -hmm. it's really good to have you on this panel. And uh, yeah, you know, I look forward to being, for, for people to be able to lean on your, on your experience. We don't have to, to invent everything from scratch. You guys reach out to Dalton if you want some publicity, but also just in general advice. He's, he's been around for a long time. Uh, thank you, Idaham, joining us all the way from Nigeria. Um, wishing you all the best of luck on your new single, Problem. And also looking forward to more projects. Um, looking forward to hopefully seeing you here in Toronto um, w one day soon. Because uh, this is basically... Yeah, until you've like performed here, you haven't really like you know like performed anywhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 where the city? Where come. the city? <laughs> exactly. So, well, you, thanks, so you, so you gotta thanks, come thanks, check thanks, check thanks, the thanks, list thanks. here. Yeah, if you don't come to the six, I'm so I'm so I'm so excited to be to be here. Like you know, talking to you guys and uh, you guys, you guys are, have really inspired me. Like have, you guys have really educated me. Stuff that you know I've I've learned here. I will never take it for granted. And first of all, another thing, the song I dropped, Problem, is is a song that talks about, you know, the country which, which I'm from, um, Nigeria, and, you know, the whole lot of things happening, and, you know, yeah, I was a victim of the SAS, you know, uh, what's it called, uh, oppression and brutal, uh, yeah, brutality, and the song talks about all that, and I just, regardless of whatever you're going through, whatever, how the country is, just, you know, look for time. You just have one life and enjoy yourself. Whatever you're going through, that's not the end of the world. You just have one life. And what you have to do with that life, keep Live your problems aside experience. because yes. it's not going to end. Whatever the problems or the issues, challenges you're facing, just look for a time and mm. enjoy yourself. That's, that's a strong problem. So I, 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 I feel that everyone on this, you know, this, this channel should just go listen, check it out. It's an amazing song. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, last but not the least, from Accra, Ghana, Rudy um, from Afro Nation. I really, you know, I love your energy. Um, and um, I think that it is the people like you that are going to build the infrastructure that we need to be able to compete one, one for one, you know. Um, one we, for one. One for one. <laughs> uh, we can't, we can't have, we can't have, uh, we can't have corporations come onto the continent and dominate without collaborating. 
um, because all this work that we that you've been doing is going to pay off. So I just want to say thank you for being on here. And yeah, let's let, let us all stay in touch. Let us keep on um, collaborating, finding ways to uh, plug in and um, uplift each other. Um, I want to give a shout out to the main sponsor, which is the Canada Arts Council that made it possible to put this together. Um, also want to shout out, you know, the, the founder of uh, AMW, uh, Jules. Jules, who... Sorry, can you mute that? Sorry. Um, Jules, who unfortunately could not uh, make it. Okay. Do you hear that? Yeah. So, um, without further ado, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, don't forget tonight, 1000 Finch Avenue West Afrobeats Festival. Tome is going to be performing. Slim Flex is going to be performing. DJ Donnett is going to be there. Um, a whole bunch of people that I'm not even, like, mentioning, like, right now. Uh, Jay Smooth is going to be there. D-Flex. Um, that's the place to be. In person, you can check it out, or you can, you know, get a free ticket, and you can watch it streaming online. All right? Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Do you want to um, go okay. through some acknowledgements? Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going to stop you because... One, two, one, two. I, I don't mind restarting. Is the stream live? Okay, great. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let me know when the mic is on. Yes. Rolling. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry uh, about sorry the technical, about technical glitch. glitch. Uh, we uh, are we back are and we are live again. We are live again. This is part this two, is part two um, of, of the African, African Music Week, Music Week conference. conference. Earlier on today, Earlier on today we, had we had a great, a great stimulating conversation, conversation about, about making, money making money in a pandemic, in a pandemic especially, especially for the African, for African music African industry. industry. We had we Dalton Higgins, 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 the publicist and writer. We also had Lukma Akambi, the business coach, coach and manager, and manager uh, for, Tommy. Uh, for Tommy. We had uh, Rudy, Rudy of Afro of Nations who tuned in from Ghana. Ghana. And from Nigeria, we, we had the artist Idahams who also tuned, also tuned in. in. And it was a really good, was conversation. good conversation. So thank you for, so tuning, thank in. You for tuning in. Before we, Before we get into part two, I would just like, would to, just uh, like to do a couple of acknowledgements. This entire week of events has been made possible by our main funder, the Canadian Council of the Arts. So thank you very much for making it possible. I also want to mention some of the other partners and sponsors. Aim to Impact, African Music Week, obviously. Helping Canadian, helping Canadian, sorry, helping sorry, neighbors, neighbors implement change. Implement change. Geisha, Geisha Productions, Productions Inc. Inc. Afrotainment, Afrotainment and Dork, and Dork TV. TV. Uh, just some, uh, some just of some our sponsors. Our so sponsors. Thank, you so thank you all for making this possible. possible. So for part two of this, um, I'm uh, very I'm excited very to hear excited from the next person we have as part of our program. As a matter of As fact, a matter growing up, it was a dream of mine to, uh, to uh, make an appearance on a appearance show. On show. And just, as, and I just as I was ready, ready to do it, to do it, it got pulled it got off the pulled air. air. I'm talking about I'm talking no about other than, than the one and only, only the iconic, iconic Toronto, Toronto Canada, Institute Canada Institute known as Master T, Master T. or Tony Eminem, Eminem Mary J. Blige, the Backstreet Boys, Jay-Z, Tupac, I believe maybe even Lauryn Hill. <laughs> Ex there you go there you go and um he is the former director of media production for rx music a music consultancy agency that helps create captivating guest experiences for retail stores hotels bars restaurants etc so basically when you're hearing music in a venue that is curated is very likely coming from master t's, master t's work, work at rx, at RX music, RX music. Um, he, is um, he is also the proud he was also was the proud also host the proud and producer, host producer of their online of their series rx, RX music, music live, live. Master T Master pulled T back the curtain, the curtain and brought a fresh, brought a fresh perspective, perspective on the, lifetime, on the lifetime, struggles, struggles, and the story and behind story some of behind today's, today's brightest stars, stars. including, including neon, dreams, neon Dreams, Cardinal Official, Vance Joy, Taleb Quelly, Maestro Fresh West, and Little Dragon. Sean Paul as well, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, Currently, he is the host, producer, and director for SOR Productions, providing online content and creating properties for the brand he has helped establish with his wife over the years. I think this might be my second or third time introducing Master T, and I never get tired of it because he's somebody that I really admire, and I think that he is an invaluable uh, part of the fabric of the music industry in this city. Without further ado, Master T. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you. Uh, I feel honored and blessed. Um, you know, as I pull out my specs, you know, um, it's uh, it's just really, uh, really a positive and blessed time to be here today to actually share. Um, I don't really call it a keynote. I just think that these are some things probably that have been on my mind, and the way I the way I look at things in terms of uh, you know what is happening. I'm going to get into the actual 
you know, uh, subject matter and topic in a second. But I really do have to uh, send out uh, a shout to, um, you know, Af the African Music Week. Um, this is, what, the sixth year? And can you imagine, you know, uh, it's still going on because of, um, you know, the virtual circumstances. Uh, but this is a testament of where we're at. This is a testament and foundation of where we are today. And the beauty of this is because, um, you know, I did speak with Jules. And um, it's interesting because, you know, Jules, I know he's, he had a family uh, situation, you know, that he's flying in. You know, and I, I messaged him today and I said, Jules, everything cool? The man is sending me, uh, you know, a, uh, a video of the, the actual flight plan for him to come to Toronto. And then he sent me a video message on the plane. Hopefully I can be there. I'm supposed to land at this time. And I'm like, hey, hold on a second. <laughs> How do you get all this accessibility on a plane? But that just really ch showed me just the fact of one, technology, and Jules is really locked in. But it also showed me the fact that he, I saw him in the summer at uh, Frida City. And he said, I got to invite you to this event. You know, I want you to be a part of it. And at that time, you know, and sometimes, you know, you hear a lot of things. I want you to come to this. I want you to come to this. But, you know, he was, he was like, I want you to be there. You have to be there. And it was important for me to be here because, you know, I realized how important this event is and what they continue to do for, for the community and for artists, musicians, promoters, for, for, for everybody. And, um, you know, so that was really um, an important factor for me uh, being here. And, and I applaud them because, you know, if you're not on virtually, you're not, you're not, that's the first thing I'm going to tell you right now. As in, whatever you plan on doing, whatever creative you are, if you are not in this virtual world, it ain't happening. Because this is all we've been locked in for the last you know, almost two, I don't know how many months. Some people say 19, 20 months, whatever. You know, um, that's, that's what it is. This, is. this is what it is. If you can't bite or eat virtually, you know, um, you, you're not going to have the ability to have uh, any level of, uh, of income. So this is, this, is, this is the reality. This is where we're at. This is why we, are, why we are here. This is why I'm sitting here at a microphone. There's cameras here. And they virtually got it. They virtually understand that I'm being bounced on YouTube to talk to you. Um, so, you know, that's one of the key factors, of, you know, of, of, of what this world is and, and, and why we are here. And as I put my glasses on, because I'm uh, also, you know, thank you uh, for the beautiful introduction. It's like, you know, it's, it's interesting because... You know, working at Much Music, I was there for, uh, what, I think 17 years, you know, and, um, you know, it was amazing. I interviewed, you know, as you mentioned, a lot, you know, a lot of great artists and, uh, you know, got to sit down with some of the, you know, Puff Daddy, you know, Dr. Dre, Eminem, uh, as you said, Lauren Hill, you know, as you said, Madonna, um, uh, Beyonce, uh, you know, and, and this is, this was great, you know, but. What I also realized for, for them, even back then, they also had supportive teams around them from then. You know, you don't, you, you don't pop up and show up, you know, just as like, oh, here I am, and, you know, I'm, 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 just, I'm just that individual. I'm just that person, you know, and I'm going to make it. It just doesn't happen that way. And especially today, because, you know, what I, what I find, and it's been beautiful, to, you know, to really listen to a lot of the young musicians, young promoters, you know, young creatives, is they do talk about their team. They, and they're very proud about, you know, their team because, because they have to have a team. You have to have a photographer. You have to have someone who deals with social media. You know, you have to have someone that is, you know, that is also your foundation, you know, the, 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 that you're locked in and connected to just to lift you up and, so, you know, and to support you when those times and those struggles are tough, you know, because we all know it is not, it, it is not easy. It is not easy, to, you know, to, to make it. So today, you know, my topic of discussion was professional development and sustainability in music and ent ent entertainment industry, how to monetize your talents and stay relevant. Whew. All that in 100, in 100 words. For me... I come here after, you know, working at, um, as he has um, it was mentioned, seven years I was at the RX Music. 
and yes, we provided you know the music for you know some of the and still uh, uh, the company provides music for you know the Hard Rock cafes, uh, Marriott hotels. You know, as an international company, you know where you can hear the music in the hallways and the elevators, whatever the restaurants, and that's what they did. And uh, my wife and I created this series called RX Music Live, and we managed to. Uh, Continuing what what I had done for so many years, which was uh, be you know sit down with people, talk to them, get you know get the insight of who they are. That's a gift. I've been blessed, and that's a gift that I'm like I know comes from my mom, my dad. Uh, but it is a gift that I've been 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 placed with that I can sit down with somebody wherever you are, and I can have that sense of making you not feel uncomfortable about speaking. Speaking your your own truth because I want to know I'm interested, and um, so I was about I was the director of media production uh, for RX Music for about four years you know within that seven, and then up until about three weeks ago, I've moved on. I've moved on, you know, to this you know to to, to now being a sixty year old man, a sixty year old black man, out there, looking for work. I Me, mean, I look for a job. So if I have a job, this is right. This is this topic. Somebody should be talking to me. I need a gig. I need work. You think me a joke? <laughs> but I'm sitting here because I gotta get out there. I gotta have sustainability. I gotta have um, you know uh, uh, professional development still. I gotta have uh, the ability to to to. To sustain, as I said, to have uh, to keep my talents available and to stay relevant in a world that is just a strictly a social media outlet. And I'm 60, and you know I, I jumped on TikTok, and because I, you know, because they haven't, as my son said, my 18 year old son, Dad, you know, you have to get your algorithm. Once they figure out your algorithm, they're going to send you all the things you like. So all I'm seeing is some little 18-year-old girl going. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. 140 million followers? <laughs> what? You're joking? What have you done? I haven't seen nothing. Where is your BA? MBA? Where is it? So, and that's, all, that's for, for musicians as well. That's for everybody. If you want to be on that platform, you have to have some level of creativity to capture people's interest, to make you stand out, to make you be different, to make you have the ability to garner a following. And it's not easy. So yeah, for me at 60 years old, oh, he's got gray dreads, over, like, hello, <laughs> like, what was he thinking? <laughs> and I mean, I take off my pants and shake up myself and, and, and do all them things, that just ain't gonna happen. But well, that's the world that obviously we're we're you know we're we're in you know and um, and I, I saw the uh, panel earlier it was an amazing panel uh, because you know they really brought uh, relevance and uh, and and truth to the situation and one of the key things they were talking about was the fact that if you're not again on the social platform you know um, it's not you, you you're not going to have the ability to get out there you're not going to have the ability to support your level of creativity. And that level of support and, and creativity comes in a bunch of different ways. You know, yes, you know, if I jump on Google and I said, you know, how to how to get a single out or how to make it as an artist, you know, one of the few things they say, you know, that they tell you, make sure you have a website, you know, make sure you're locked into, uh, you, know, maybe this, you know, social media, you know, make, make sure you're putting out your music to other platforms. There's various platforms you know, that are available, you know, um, to monetize on, you know, but, you can get your stuff on, you know, uh, uh, on a score, like, you know, like, you know, music. There's, there's a ton of um, uh, music creatives out there, you know, that are looking to license uh, music and, uh, and, and, and content, uh, you know, music supervisors, you know, those type of things. You know, so th th those are, you know, those are ways of, of, of obviously having the ability to, you know, to monetize your earnings and craft. But one of the key things you have to do is, is you really have to understand who you are as, as an artist, first and foremost, or a photographer, or a promoter, 
you have to start, you have to understand what your product is. What makes you different, you know? And that's the thing I have to look at to my own self as well. As I'm 60 years old, yeah, I've got all these. I've interviewed a ton of people. But what, what does that mean? Is that going to get me a job at, um, you know, at, uh, at somebody's company? Because they're going to look at me and they're going to they're going to look at me and say, the guy's 60, you know. You know, and we can get some young, fresh blood in here and we can pay them less. You know, uh, but he's 60. He's got experience. Yes, he might have experience. But I can still pay that 30-something-year-old less. You know, so I have to look at my own self. And I have to say to myself, what makes, what gives, what are my strengths? You know, what do I, what do I have still that I can, you know, still, still have sustainability, still have the ability to make an income? You know, um, I have a very smart wife. She well smart. She's more <laughs> less smarter than me. So, and support. Two young sons who are, you know, 18 and 24 years old that keep me hip, you know what I'm saying? You know, always sticking, Dad, look at this. I'm like, oh, I don't really want to, but I should look at it because it's going to keep me hip. But those are the things that, that I have to take in for my own self and, and process and, like, you know, what can I look at? One of the biggest conversations my wife and I are having is, is to have the creative to bring to Africa, to bring what I've done, not necessarily interviews, but this other product to Africa. So the timing, you know, and I already talked to Jules, and Jules goes, don't worry, man. Yes, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but that's, that's amazing. But it's also what you know within yourself as to what you have as an individual, what you have as a person, what you can bring to the table that is going to make you unique, what's going to make you, you different, to have somebody touch you, touch what you have. You've worked at this craft, but you have to be honest with yourself, too. Make sure your music's right. Make sure it's, if it's, you know, if, if you're doing music, make sure it's produced right. Make sure the quality's there. If you're going to go online, and yes, you have the accessibility. We all have the accessibility to go on, and, um, you know, and, and, and go on Instagram and go live. We all have that ability. But go on there for a reason. Like, to me, when I see someone, I go, let me pop in on this live. Yeah, you know, so I had some pancakes today, you know, and I just wondered how you feel about pancakes. You know, and um, just wondered how you felt about, you know, just driving down the street. You know, I mean, bring something. You know, to me, use use that platform for, for something that is, you know, positive. But br bring it that it's going to make you different. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you shine. It's going to make people pay attention. And there's a lot of people out there that are doing it, for sure. And you're competing against every one of them. That's one thing you have to remember. If that person has a hundred and something million because she's going like this, she's fine. And if she's in America, she's getting paid off of TikTok. You know? Um, so you, you have to look at the outlets. You have to look at YouTube. You have to look at Facebook. You have to look at, you know, because you know, people look, oh, Facebook, it's, a, you know, it's just for old people. You know? <laughs> you know? And it's been categorized. It's like, you know, is Facebook is for, yes, you know, you have to, but hey, somebody on Facebook might be a, a major a major music producer. Somebody on Facebook might be, you know, um, you know a, a huge promoter that caught you on Facebook, but didn't catch you on Instagram. So you can't shut down any levels of plat um, social media platforms. You have to be, have the ability to, to, to be out there. You know, there's a couple stories, you know, um, you know, even that I want to share, too, is because one of the things that I, I think with, with anybody is to have the ability to listen, is to listen to what someone is bringing you. Take in, take in what, they're, you know, what they're doing. I still listen. I was around Cardinal, the one legendary Cardinal official, big time, big time uh, artist. But at the same time, Cardi's also, you know, the, the head of A&R, Universal Music Canada. And they recently, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's major things happening for a young artist by the name of Nonzo. I'm sure you, you guys know? Sorry. Nonzo? Yeah. Nonzo, yeah? Yeah, you're sharing with me. But major things happening for this young cat. And I said, you know, Cardi, I said, you know, well, what, what, what is it about this young guy? He said, you know what it is, is he produces, he writes, he does everything. 
and he's a great guy. He's a really great human being. And that's, and that's important because whatever he's crafted and done for himself, and I, I managed to interview him at Free the City, and he is a great guy. He's a very humble little young cat. But, you know, um, and, you know, I was, I was saying to him, bigging him up, and he was just like, mm, bringing it down, like, no, no, no. But, you know, those are the things that a record executive, to this day, those are the things he's looking for. You know, part of the things he's looking for, you know, is, is making sure that you, you are, you are grounded. You know, you, you, you do have the ability to, you know, to, to, to take what you're doing and to take it to other people. You know, to bring your craft and to bring, to, to bring what you're doing to other people. And, and that's key. It's very important at this, you know, this time is that, you know, yeah, we are all locked into this, you know, this pandemic. For some of us, we've come out and we've, we've jumped up and risen. For a, lot, for, for, for a lot of us, it's been a downtrodden process, a process of looking at self, a process of going, who am I? You know, where am I? And looking to the ones that we love and saying, you know what? Thank God you're here. Thank God you're here to support me. Thank God we're here to support each other. You know, it's, I don't want to get too heavy, but this is, this is what we're all coming out of. You know, and then you expect it to be, to rise as, a, as an artist and, and, and to come out and to, you know, to, 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 to make these things happen. That's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure, but, you know, keep the, keep the core, keep the foundation together. Keep it, keep it to the point of keeping it close. Close to you, to the, to, to the ones that are around you that are, are going to bring you a level of, of positivity. Because you're always, you're always going to need that. I don't care what the social media is. I don't care whether you got a CV, resume, whatever it is. There's core values that we've, we've a lot of people have, some of them just had to re, relearn what the core values are. They have to relearn love. love loving yourself. Loving others. And so whatever, you, whatever your product is, those are the things you have to look at. Because the social media is not a cash cow. It's not something where, hey, you know what? I did this, boom. I'm going to make a ton of money. I mean, and that's what's going to happen. You know, one of the artists I managed to interview uh, over about a, about a year and a half process was Havaya Maidi. And he's um, a Canadian, Canadian um, hip-hop artist, amazing uh, artist. First time I interviewed her, she came by our RX Music Studios and she performed live came there with her sister and tore it up. And it was actually my birthday that day, and she was amazing. The next time I interviewed, interviewed her was at the 2019 uh, Juno Awards. And she was there, came in, you know, hung out, and I just sat down with her and talked to her. And uh, at that point, you know, she, um, uh, she, as far as I was concerned, she was snubbed. She, she wasn't nominated, but it's okay. She's stuck in there. She, she knows what the deal is. Next time I interviewed her was, um, I think it was the 2019 uh, Polaris, Polaris Music Awards. And she won. Prize, the prize was, I think, $50,000. And she won. Sat down with her, had a chat with her and said, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for winning this award. You know, well, you know what do you owe to it? You know, and she just said, you know, it's, it's, you know the team perseverance, putting everything I got to do for myself and, you know, believing in myself and, you know, stumbling blocks up and down. But you know, one of the most beautiful things she did, she got to quit her job, quit her full-time job at Long and McQuaid in Brampton. That was huge. Now you talk about sustainability, she realized this gig enabled her to get to that point. Because I'm sure she had the flexibility because she'd been there, and I know she's a good employee, that they said, we believe in what you're doing. What, you got to leave early? Go leave early. You got to take this day off and do another shift? Okay, great. That's what sustainability is. That's reality. That is reality. It's not about going, oh, yeah, you know, I just did a video. And I'm out here, you know, I have a big bottle of juice, you know, and I have this, and yeah. 
and yeah, and you're driving back home to Brampton, and your mom is cooking your dinner, and you know, and you have a nice home, and you have a nice bed to sleep in. And I'm not taking that away from anybody, but you have to understand what your sustainability is and what it really, what it really means. It means supporting yourself, supporting yourself through this time, as you build, as you build who you are as as an artist and as a creative. And if your mom and your dad believe in that or whoever is around you, your brother, sister, they support that, that's what it's about. That is sustainability. Having that support, having them say to you, hey, I got your back. I'm here for you. When you go down or you're feeling down, I'm here for you. So that to me was the proudest moment is when I looked at her, looked at Havaya Mighty, and she looked at me and she said, yeah, I got to quit my job. But she's smart, too. She goes, you know, we're still on good terms because she knows in herself, she said, if, if this shit ain't working, I, I mean, I have to go back to Long and McQuaid. Thank goodness it, 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 it's not. And she's out there doing her thing, continue to do her thing because she brings something unique. She brings something different to the market. And if things were, and we can all talk about it, yeah, she'd be touring and she'd be doing festivals and she'd be doing all these beautiful things. And that would be, you know, that would be a blast. But no, she's... We all have to reinvent ourselves. One of the things is, I can sit here and I can chat all day long, but I do want it to be interactive. So if there are any levels of questions, please, you know, f f fire them off to me. I got a couple more things I got to say. Um, but yeah, I, I want this to be interactive. I, I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. You know, um, one of the things I want to talk about as well was, um, I, I, want, I want to wrap it up with this point. And the point is, you know, over this pandemic, we came from Rx Music Live, which was, we had this studio, amazing studio. The funkiest, coolest kitchen you've ever seen turned into a studio. We had guest artists, international, on major labels, indie artists come to our studios. Man like Maxi Priest um, stopped by our studios. Wycliffe stopped by our studios. You know, Vance Joy, a uh, popular artist. The Sheepdogs, I'll turn. And the thing is, for me, I talk to any and anybody. You, you're a musician. You got music. I don't care whether you're alternative, country, rock, um, you know, hip-hop, R&B, reggae. I'm, I, I want to know your story. Because your stories, that's what it's about. It is about the story. Because your story is, gives the ability for other people to learn about who you are as an artist. And what you've gone through as an artist. And when we left the studios in March, of, I guess, well, I don't want to get dates. When did this thing start? 2019, I guess, 20, 2019. I can't even remember. When we, did, when we left and we realized we had to go home and work from a computer. March? March, March 2019? 2020. 2020? All right, you see, I'm, I just added another year. Um, thank you. Uh, you. You see what COVID did to me? Anyway. Um, but when we left, everyone was like, okay, bye, see you. And, you know, pack up your computer, you know, log in, make sure you're all there. And, uh, and, that, and that was the deal. We, we, nobody knew what was going to go and what was going to happen. We were leaving, you know, everything what we're doing there, Rx Music, and we, we, we came back uh, to being at home, being on a computer. And our team at the time, you know, we said, look, you know, like, what are we going to do? We decided to go uh, online and start doing uh, Rx Music Live. And at this point, you know, so this was like March, you know, probably like March uh, 2020 or whatever. And at that time, we, we really didn't know. I didn't even know. I had to call my son. How do I go live? <laughs> you know, like, hey, come over here. And he's like, Dad. You know, I'm like, but I've got to go live. And so I start to go live. Start doing, um, you know, interviews and all the publicists and the PR agencies and the, you know, the made from the major labels, the universals, uh, the indoor recesses, the, um, you know, uh, Warner, Sony, all, all these guys came on board. Because at that time, the artists themselves had no idea, no clue. I've just written a damn album. I was just about to release it. I was going to go through that process. What is that process? The process is to tour. To make money off of that tour, to eat, to, to sustain. A lot of artists were just bunkered. They were just in the, within themselves, realizing like, shit, man, here I am. I've just created this album. Do I release it? 
Or do I hold off and wait for this all to clear? And those are the discussions I was having with a lot of these artists. You know, a lot of these artists that were, you know, that have put such an effort of a, a, a body of work into creating this music, you know, creating this album, realizing that they couldn't do it. They couldn't perform the same dynamics, the same route, the same path that they always did. Put out a record, I promote it, and I tour. And I pop, it, pop in at home and relax for a few minutes with my family. I write another record, I put in the time, I write, put the record out, I tour, sell some merch, and um, you know, and uh, that, that was the process. And I talked to artists that have been doing this for years, some of them a couple of decades, that they would tour their record and go out there and, you know, work. Now to talk to these artists and they're around their families for a much longer time than they've ever been around their families. Because a lot of these artists would tell me, I missed my son's birthday. I missed my son's graduation. I missed my daughter's uh, soccer team winning the championship. They got to spend some time and chill out at home. They got to be around their family again. And I think that's what's one of them, as, as, as messed up as everything is, that is one of the beautiful things that has happened that we, you know, we really haven't had the ability to, to really talk about and, and discuss. But those, that's one of the things that has happened. And one of the keys I also spoke to him about was mental health. I'm telling you now, we haven't had the ability. Now, now it's, it's an open discussion. Every artist I talked about throughout it, and I didn't even realize I was even speaking to him about it. I was just finding out how you're doing. How are you? Because that's what was really important to me. How are you? How are you making this happen? How are you doing it as an? How are you sustaining it as an artist? And for some of them, they said, "Man, I had my own mental health issues, my own mental health challenges. I couldn't write. I couldn't create. I couldn't do the things that were so easy and accessible to me. Because I was dealing with mental health. I don't care who you are. You could have the best team. You could have Drake's team." That's a good team, that. <laughs> Real time, big team, big, big Drake's team, weekend's team, big team, that. Jesse Reyes, big team, that. Daniel Caesar, big team, that. All of these teams, you can have it all. But if your mental health is not in check, it don't mean, don't mean nothing. So I, I'm not leaving on a, a down note. That's a positive note to me, is to check your mental health because the artists that I spoke with, all of them had a rise. All of them had the ability to come after and say, you know what, as much as I went through this, I wrote this record, and I'm going to put it out, I'm going to put it out virtually, I'm just going to see what happens because I want to put it out there. It's because this is what I went through during this time, and it means something to me. And I want other people to feel that record as well to have the ability to, 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 to listen to what I wrote, listen to my creative. If I was a promoter, I've, you know, I, I've shifted. I'm, I'm doing something else. I'm doing this. I'm learning. I'm learning about myself as a promoter. I'm learning about myself as a photographer. I'm learning about myself as an A&R person. I'm learning about myself as a creative. These are keys. These are, these are things that are important that you, you have to learn. So as I sit here, and as I told you before, I'm 60 years old now but me look good. <laughs> Black don't crack. <laughs> I'll say that for my own self. Thank you. I don't care what you all say. <laughs> I just know within myself, I have to, that's the thing. That's the thing I told myself. I'm out here in this world, 60, looking good. And now I may not die me here yet. But I could, and that would definitely get me a 30-year-old position. Thank you. <laughs> but... <laughs> But you know what? You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the floor, um, you know, and, and, and take take definite the, you know, take questions, you know, if you have some, you know, uh, please I, I want to be open. But uh, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry, oh, my bad, forgot. Uh, so now that it's 19 months in, and you've decided to dabble onto social more, 
how have you found the transition at this point? Um, that's a great point. I mean, you know, when I, when we went in there and started to do Rx Music Lives, we were always on Instagram. So, you know, uh, you know, so learning, you know, learning and understanding that platform. And for me, I've always been the one that's done, you know, like I want to sit down and I want to speak to you. Does somebody want to lock in and watch our Rx Music Live on their phone for 40 minutes? So my wife would be telling me, and I'd be fighting it, you know, she goes, it's 40 minutes, like, you know, that's a long time. I'm like, yeah, but I know, but I'm engaging you know, all the, you know, look at me, look at what I'm bringing. She's like, look, you're on somebody's phone for 40 minutes. They got to be really into that artist to lock in for 40 minutes. Okay, okay, I get it, but still. So, yeah, so, you know, you, you have to look at the platform, the different platforms, you know, and I got to learn for my own self. It's like, okay, well, you know, Facebook provides something else. Look at Facebook. Um, we just started to drop some things on TikTok and some, some unique things on, on TikTok um, and just kind of learning about the, the, you know, the dynamics of, of, of what TikTok uh, brings, you know, because, you know, there's this kind of like this misunderstanding, misinterpretation about what I think, you know, young people think TikTok is. I just have to do this. And, you no, know, you just have to do that. And there's 500 other million people doing the same thing. You know, so, you know, if you, if you are an artist and you, or you, you are a person that, you know, wants to have that low level of social media, you, you have to understand what you're going to bring to the table. It has to be unique. It has to be different. You know, you have to have the ability to, to show people that I'm presenting something different. I'm presenting something unique because, because anybody, you know, it's there, you know. Um, so, you know. And study the platforms. Understand, understand what the mediums are, you know, like because they all present something different. You know, talking to my nephew and my son, you know, they're like, yeah, you know, Instagram, it's, it's not the thing now. But what do you mean? I've just been doing it for the last. Uh, what do you mean it's not the thing? You know, the algorithms have changed. It's too hard for for you to get, you know, get out there and da 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 and all the rest of this stuff. I'm like, but I just spent like almost the last X amount of months pushing on Instagram. You know, so, you know, TikTok's a thing. You know, so, you know, that, you know, that's what they're telling me. So, you know, so really and truly, it's just about just understanding, you know, the different, the different platforms out there. Sorry. So uh, just to build off of that, um, you're used to speaking to people. And now you have to think about algorithms. How has that transition been for you? You know, I had to put it in a place, you know, when I started to do the Rx Music Lives, when I was live... And speaking with that person, I had to put it, for, for one thing that I do for my own self, I, I, I research extensively about that individual. I don't care if you're an indie artist. I don't care if you've put out 15 albums and you've sold 100 million records. I have to, I have to research, and I research to the core. I research to the point, I, I'm, I'm not TMZ. I ain't looking for dirt. I ain't looking for nothing nasty. I'm looking for something that's going to touch you. One of the biggest compliments for me is when an artist says, that's a great question. Because they've been interviewed by 100 people or 50 people or 20 people. So for me to come up with a good question and make them think, that's what's important to me. So there's a point where I couldn't live with the algorithms. I couldn't sit there and say, I'm going to sit, you know, because if I did, you're crushed. You're done. Oh, man, I did that interview with, and what? Um, how come there's only like 100 people on that one? But yeah, I did this one, and there was like 700. I don't get it. Let me go figure it out. Let me call Instagram. You know, and... Um, so there's a point where it's like I, I, I couldn't live by that. You know, um, wh what I do and what, you know, what I did on there, as I, on, on, on Instagram in terms of doing interviews, was the same process for me. But it was just the fact that it was, it was bringing it live and bringing it to the point of, by the end of it, you know, we would do like this quick six question thing. Um, but I incorporated a tablet. And then I, I, I brought the tablet to bring different things. Like if this, somebody was you know, doing something on, on, on Instagram, I would take it on the tablet and I would show them on the phone, you know. So I, I worked with it and I was very proud of myself because it was like, it wasn't just, you know, I was making it interactive and I was making it, um, you know, performance-based. Uh, but at the same time, still making it engaging. So, you know, there's a point where I don't really give a shit about algorithms because to me, who, who, is, who is Mr. Instagram? Who is Mr. TikTok? Um, or Mrs. TikTok, or he, she, Miss TikTok, whoever, whoever you are, you know, I don't really know who you are, because there's a, there's a lot of bullshit that surrounds it. Even when all these uh, artists that went from, went on Twitch, you know, it was, it was, Twitch was a thing, and all these DJs jumped on Twitch, 
And all these DJs got shut down by Twitch, but yet the big DJs could play, but the young, playing the same music that the the you know the 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 the, 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 the smaller DJs were playing, but yet the smaller DJs, oh sorry, block, can't get you. But the bigger DJs, so you know that's teething. You know that's not <laughs> that's not right. That ain't making no sense. So you know, so I, I can't I can't live by it. I think it's just about being 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 out there, and you know, the next point is 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 just being creative and just continue to present something unique and different. And that's what I believe I presented for when I was on Extended Mix, when I was on Demix. I, I brought something, Master Team Roxy. Who do you know brought a keyboard sampler Nobody. to the table? Nobody. <laughs> Hold on, let me just take a drink. Hold on a second. Let me take a juice. Nobody. I had to bring, present something different. I had to bring, present something unique, and that's that's really you know what it continues to be. You have to you have to be different. You have to present something, and you have to believe in what you're doing. Thank you. I I wanted to quickly go back to what you said about um, mental health, and you said you got to check your mental health. How do you check your mental health? Because I know mental health is a big thing in the black community, and sometimes um, we're looking for techniques for us to use ourselves. So when you're going through something, uh, how do you check your mental health and the techniques you use that you could share with other people? Wow, that's a great that's a great question. You know, and I think you know one of the things that happens is us as black people, we've been raised just suck it up, just go out there, be tough. You know, um, you know. I watched my mom, strong, powerful woman, you know, and I would see her go through what was what considered now mental health. She didn't have mental health issues, but just dealing with, with, with you know, this is a struggle. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to survive, you know, and it's bringing me down, and I'm feeling a certain way. And, um, you know, and, and, and you watch that, you know, and, and I noticed, too, even for young people, we have an 18-year-old. 18, and he's in university now, ex-university, whatever it's called, Ryerson, whatever whatever they're calling it this week, <laughs> whatever he's called, and he got in there. He spent his last, you know, formative years of high school, year and a half, you know, didn't go to grade 11, didn't do graduation, he was all, he was, he was at home. Also, jumping into university, man, the man's got fresh gear, fresh shoes, Man's ready to go to university. Meet people, talk to people. Oh, you're gonna be doing it virtually. This is the form of this. This is his life, man. This is where he wants to interact. He wants to meet people. He wants to socialize. And it's been taken away. And we have to make sure his mental health is in check. It's key for him. It's key that we listen to him, to listen to what he says to us as parents. And, you know, maybe not everyone doesn't have that. You might not have mom and dad at home, an aunt, an uncle, a sister, a brother, anyone that's going to have the ability to just listen to you share. And for me, you know, my sharing comes from, you know, that I, that I, I walk. I make sure I walk to, you know, to clear my head, to let new thoughts come in, to take in some air. And, you know, for me, it's a power walk, too. You know, I got my Fitbit on. I'm just like, <laughs> just a power walk. I get, you know, I do the first five minutes, you know, because I've been told, do the first warm-ups. I do the first five minutes. I just check in, you know, just, all right. <laughs> After that five minutes, boom, to the next 10 minutes. And I'm like, Fitbit, mm, yeah, man, 115, that's good. And I just do the fit, Fitbit walk. So I do my walking. You know, um, I'm not a big meditator uh, because... My mind just moves. I just can't. I can't keep focused. And then I get mad at myself. That I'm supposed to meditate, and I'm trying to meditate. And I'm like, but all these things are going through my head, and I can't stop them. And I can't. I'm not quiet. And it's just going through my brain. And I'm like, oh damn, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> but I take peace if I look into the backyard and I see nature, and I just take it in. Talk to my family. See, one thing I didn't used to do. Sometimes, especially going through times where it's like, was the ability as a black man to say, I'm struggling right now. You know what? Right now, I just, I don't feel okay. 
I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be the pillar. I'm supposed to be strong. And those things where you have to be vulnerable. There's a level of vulnerability. I don't care whether you, what color you are. There's a level of vulnerability that, 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 that hits you. And you have to have the openness to talk about it. Because that's what, that's what helps you. That's what, you know, t to clear it, you know, to clear those fears, to clear those things. I'm very fortunate that I have an older son, you know, he's, he's, uh, he plays basketball, basketball professionally, you know, but I have a, this core little group of his friends that are all around the same age, 20-something, you know, 24, 22, 23, and they'll reach out to T when they want to talk about things, and they'll reach out to me. And ones I haven't seen in years just go, hey, Uncle T, how are you? You know, um, I'm going, you know, just wondering. And I start asking them how they're doing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Master T. Master T has nothing to do with this shit. It has nothing. It's a matter of just taking that little youth and just listening to that youth. Because for those little words that you can share with him or share with, share with her are key. Or share with anybody. They need that level of support. And I didn't really want this to be a platform of, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm just speaking of the times. And I think it's all relevant. I think it's all relevant in terms of, you know, you know putting yourself together uh, as, an, you know, as an artist and, 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 and going out to the world. Because you, you, you're going to need all, all of these things. So th those are the things that are, are very important to me is just, you know, is having that ability to, to share with my family. And to talk to my mom. My mom's in her 80s. And she's still, you know, she's still my biggest advocate. You know, and you know, even if I say something, oh, mom, this, you know, this happened. Oh, my gosh, that happened to you? Hold on a second. Let me just come. Hold on. Let me just, where is it? I'm in kitchen. I will take a go tree and come down there and deal with them, you know. Let me just come and take my baby. And I'm still my mama's baby, which is great. And I love that. I love knowing that she she has my back, you know, as well as as well as as well as my wife has my back, my sons, and 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 I'm fortunate. And for some people say, oh well, I don't have that, you know. There are agencies, there are people out there, and sometimes you just have to you have to go out there, you have to go out there, and 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 and, and find them for you, to have that ability to share. Thank you for your question. Yes, Master T, meeting you for the first time. I've had great things about you, legendary, like uh, the introduction. Thank you, Chinidu. <laughs> and it's just nice to meet somebody who has been in the business for really some time. So you're not speaking because you read about this, but you've actually lived this. I want to pose a question about longevity in the industry. You know, now we are in the age of, I call it the Snapchat mindset because it takes a second and they've already forgotten what's the next shot. You know what I mean? It's Snapchat. We are quick. Everything is so fast. I want to talk about longevity in the industry in terms of, an, of being an artist and developing an artist. Talk to me like a person who has just landed from Uganda. I'm from Uganda. I am a musician and I want to start here, but I don't want to appear for one minute I want to be able to be here 10 years later and open doors for any other immigrants. Oh, these children from Uganda who are here for the first time. Tell us a little bit about that as something, because I know the topic is monetizing your craft and how do we move on in the new times of post the pandemic? As a person in the industry who has been there for quite some time, what is your say and how do you advise us? Thank you. Thanks, another great question. You know, it's... Um you know, I think I think longevity just comes from you having the ability to to know and understand and 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 be in the present. You know, um, I've been it's been always been hard for me to go to to you know to think ahead to to think okay futuristically okay I'm going to do this in the future I'm going to and you, you have to do this and you lay out lay it all out. I think one of the things is you know as an artist and as a person you know coming through is you. You, you have to understand the wealth of knowledge that you bring. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but you're bringing a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge that you can share in many platforms. And sometimes that platform might not be the actual platform that you think it is. You know, you say you want to give, you know, back to, you know, the youth and, you know, and have, have that sustainability, you know. So, you know, so, you know I'm not going to tell you exactly do this or do that, but it is about believing in, 
what you're doing and that passion that you have. Because I can tell, meeting you for f two minutes, you know, as you already told me, we're going to be working. <laughs> we're going to be working for a long time. <laughs> and there's something about that I believe. <laughs> But it's just, it's also just knowing that, you know, what, what you are bringing to the table, what you have, uh, you know, the, you know, the ability in your craft, what you've developed. Because I, 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 you know, I haven't seen you perform live, but there's something I just understand that I sense that is unique about what, you, what you're bringing to the table, that you're not bringing what everybody else is bringing. And it's also a, a matter of, we can't sometimes, I think what happens is, you know, with, with, with any level of longevity, is people depend on what is, what is given to them, what is there, the accessibility of this is what it is. It's never just what it is. There's many other areas that you can, you can lock into and you can, you, you can share. Whatever you share might be, might be a wonderful message for corporate world. Because the one thing I'm going to tell people now, what I feel, Corporation America, Corporation Canada, they're looking for our voices. They need our voices because they don't get it. And they're willing to, I believe, hire someone who has a valid voice to share that experience. It's a level of understanding because they know they fucked up. Excuse my French. They know they've messed up over X amount of time. They know they've, 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 they've had that person hired who was working uh, you know, on this floor, never been able to bounce up to this floor, you know, because, hey, you know what, do you, do you, you want to come to Muskoka or go over right here to the, the corporate events and uh, you might not fit in. I was told that before. I was told that I'd love you to come, but uh, you might not like what we're doing. What? I can't sit on a lake and get bit by a mosquito? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't, I can't sit on a lake and, 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 and roast two tree mar marshmallows and, 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 and have a juice, have a beer. So, you know, I think, you know, I, I think sometimes you have to look at different avenues. And, you know, and, and, that, and that creativity, you know, a key person um, uh, that, you know, that, that's still in the industry, still doing his thing, is, um, is Dwayne Morgan. Um, I don't know if you all know, do you all know Dwayne Morgan? He came on my show back in, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, on the mix, extended mix. Uh, I just saw his tape the other day, actually, when he came on there, uh, 90 something. And, you know, he's been doing his stuff, you know, consistently. And, you know, at one point I said, yeah, you know, well, this is years later, you know, and I said, yeah, you know, well, you as a teacher. He goes, I'm not a teacher. I always thought he was an educator. He has managed to sustain and create and live by his own means and his own creativity by promoting Dwayne Morgan. He does, he's not working for anybody else. He, that, he is what, that is it. He is Dwayne Morgan. And that is an amazing thing, you know? And can everybody do it? No. Some people have to have the nine to five, you know? And, and there's nothing wrong with the nine to five, you know? Um, but I think now with people nine to five, it's a matter of now, you know, you may be working virtually, you know, you know, you're not, it's not, you know, bouncing to that office and doing the same things you were doing. Um, you know, here, it's like, you know, there would have been a virtual crowd, a no, real crowd, you know, we're here virtually, you know, so um, I share longevity, longevity with you as me again, say it again at 60, realizing there's a level of reinvention for my own self. And you have to, you have to, you have to embrace it and accept it, you know. And I think that yeah, I, um, I love that you just touched that because we're talking about having the older musicians. I'm not saying older because of age, but also in terms of who they are in the industry and acknowledging the hard work that goes into your 60-year-old career. I'll call it that because that seems like that's all you have done, and I love it. Mm. I want to also touch on the point of the difference between the fem women and men. And, you know, sometimes I think we were talking about this with the team, uh, even talking about pay. I'm really tackling a few things because of your, um, I want to milk all of that you've got in you <laughs> right now. And um, you may, let's say you'll have a, w w if we had a lady right now on this panel and you're there, and if you went behind, you'd find out that the gentleman was paid more than the lady. They're talking about, they're here at the same time. You're going to speak for the same amount. I mean, what 
what's that all about from your perspective again and from your experience and how can we level up here on? I mean, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, am I going to give you the uh, direct answer? Um, it's a hard thing to answer. This is uh, goes way back. This is this just didn't sta happen this week. This has been going on for years. You know, um, you know, uh, you know, pay equality, respect. But I will say, and I think you'd all agree, there are more women in the boardroom now. There are more women that are, uh, you know, that, that that are in positions of power. You know. Um, you know, is it is it going to continue to change? I think what it is too is I think I think women are continue to make their voices heard. You know, they're presenting their uh, platform, and they and they can speak about it. Like you know, what if I come in here, and I'm making ten thousand to speak here? Okay, fifteen thousand. Um, <laughs> and a woman's making five thousand. She can go out there. I heard Master T is making this. Why am I not this? There's avenues now to share those, you know, to to to, to share those um, uh, voices and, and, and opinions. There's a lot of things, you know, that you know having the um, ability to talk about, and that's one positive about social media, is the fact that you know we can talk about, you know, um, you know, uh, the different levels of you know sensu sexuality, the different levels of, of gender. We're having those discussions. Before those discussions weren't even discussions. You know, people wouldn't. People didn't bring them to the table. People didn't bring them to the platform. You know, whereas now, you know, yeah, I can talk to an artist, and they, you know, and um, please refer to this artist as that, that, that. And I had to, honestly, I had to learn that, and I have no problem learning that because it's it, it's showing respect to whoever that person is. You know, so so that's changed. That's changed for me as, you know, as, as being someone that's, you know, been in the industry or whatever. And it's not a bad change. It's a change that I realize that you have to accept change as, as is what's happening for, for, for women. You know, is it happening overnight? No, it ain't. Is it happening? Yes, on, on some levels. Because if you look at some of these female, you know, the, some of the biggest artists, that, you know, that, that are women, you know that are doing major that are doing major things in the world. You know, they have a platform and they are sharing it. You know, and the younger artists they're also picking up on it as well. You know, they're also sharing what what they're going through. You know, what they're dealing with. You know, as uh, as artists. also the bullshit that they deal with in this industry. What you know, you, you like my music, but uh, you think I have to show off my body and show off who I am because. Because that's what the industry is dictating. And that's not necessarily what it is. There's a lot of fully clothed, beautiful artists that are out there, female artists that are making waves. And are speaking and singing about, you know, a, a conscious level. So even the industry has changed. Yeah, you can have, you know, whatever. And we all see and we all know who they are. And, you know, if you want twerk and you want to do all the rest of this and all of that. And that's, that's, that's who you are. But at the end of the day... They come back to speaking about emp empowerment for themselves, empowering who they are. So, you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of change. And, you know, you, you just got to hope and pray that it continues to move forward and uh, continues to change. All right. Uh, just had one question before we like wrap it up. And this was just a, a comment and then like a question. Right. Um, I think... Without you having said that you're 60, most of us would not be able to guess that you were 60. So when you're talking about reinventing yourself, maybe you should be like a model for some kind of <laughs> skincare, some kind of skin. See, you see, you see it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, but on a on a serious note, there's been a lot of. Um, there's been a lot of renewed attention on much music. Um, you may have seen the different types of, you know, like spin-offs, you know, like et cetera. And um, I was actually just wondering if, uh, you know, if any of that has affected you, meaning have people like reached out? Because just in the past year, there's been a lot of like nostalgia. They've relaunched as a digital thing and blah, blah, blah. Like, has any of that, have you been involved in any of that conversation or has it inspired you to, um, you know, come out in your own way? Like, 
just how how has that impacted you? Because I know it is a part of your of your of your legacy. Um, and for me, when I hear people talking about like you know like much music, I think about you and the mix. Right. So how has ha, has this like been a conversation that's come up recently for you in any way? You know, it's, it's an interesting question because um, one much music kind of caters to what much music thinks much music was intimate interactives you know uh you know all the you know all the rock brace genres you know and um it's not that they didn't want to give me credit um you know there was soul in the city obviously rap city you know um uh demix uh started out as extended mix which i hosted and created and produced with my wife and there's a lot of nostalgia there there's a lot of history Went through, I was on there from 1990, and I left uh, Much Music in 2001. There's a lot of legacy. I came through the 90s of R&B, Soul, Drew Hill, uh, you know, Drew Hill um, you know, Casey and JoJo, um, you know, DeBrat, Mary J, you know, all of that. Came through the legacy of Dancehall, Beanie Man, um, Bounty, uh, Buju. Came through all of that. And it was documented. And they came on my show because they knew that was the show. They knew that. So, you know, it's interesting because, you know, me and, you know, and it's funny because I haven't been approached by, uh, you know, by, by Much Music. And Much Music is back. You know, much Music is what are doing, whatever, whatever. And, and I don't really care because they never really checked for me anyway. I was doing my own thing. I created, cre we, created this, we created this show, created this outlet for the people. For, for, our, for our community, for the people, and for the executives that are now executives, whether they're white, blue, green, or whatever, they watched Rap City. They watched The Mix. They watched all this musical, because that's what they were raised on. That's what they know. And that's what they go back to. So me not being, I don't know, take it a shade that you know, they haven't reached out to me, because I'm doing, okay, I'll share with just you guys personally. <laughs> Just you, just you guys. But I've been doing a little thing on TikTok. <laughs> and it's an interesting platform. But my wife and I have been chopping up some little cute clips of things that happened on Demix and Extend Demix back in the day. And my little, what, what, my, my tag, I mean, my, 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 my ID, what we call it again? My, 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 my handle. I mean, handle? My handle is at... Master T is back, but B A C K K. So you don't get. So we put a few little things out there, and you know, get some nice little love. Put out, um, put out a a brat. A de brat. Oh, this person just left. She she, she gone to. <laughs> I don't know she gone to look it up or whatever. <laughs> oh, maybe she works for much music. <laughs> it's a spy. Yeah. <laughs> come here, come watch me. So been you know been doing that. Uh, there's some beautiful clips on there. There's um you know we've done uh, uh, recently did one with Debrat. I uh, did one with Joe, uh, with Joe, and uh, we did one with uh, 3LW. And just put it out there because these are things that are part, as you said, part of my legacy. My legacy. I produce, created, so whatever. I mean you know like you know this is lawyer talk now. I'm just lawyer lawyering up. Hold on. Hold on a second. You just make sure. I wear many hats. So I'm lawyering up. And it's not even about that. I don't think the conversation is even about that because no one can stop me from putting out what I, you know, what I did to share with a new audience. To share with these young cats that, you know, before Drake, nothing wrong with Drake. Love Drake. But Drake would go, yo, I watch that still. You know, I watch when that person came on. I watch when um, Abale Bujubantan uh, Bojo came on. Oh, kids. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the little, the little ones. Love it. Um, I watched when uh, Bojo was a ballad coming on, uh, uh, coming on Extended Mix. He was 17 years old with a Wayne Wonder. He came to the show. He performed. He hung out. You know, um, sit down. My sit down interviews was full on hour interview chatting with Lauren Hill. You know, full on connection and, and chat with um, with one of you know, one of the people I really love, Mary J. Blige. You know, to 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 see what a lot of these younger cats didn't have the opportunity to see, 
And that just show why I think I'm so incredibly great. It's not about that. It's about showing that something came before all of this. Something came before you got to jump on, on TikTok. Much music was the social media. Much music was the avenue for you to see fashion, to hear music, to, to, to hear music news. You know, much music was something I uh, tagged as Canadian product when I had Canadian artists on there. We're talking about Cardi. We're talking about Maestro, Mishi Me, you know, um, Shaw Claire. Um, all of these amazing Canadian artists, you know, th 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 that came through. It gives you an understanding as to who they are, what they did. Because we have history. And that's one thing I want to leave everybody with. Please stop forgetting, stop understanding about what we've done here in this country. You know? Why, how does a Drake come out of here? How does a Weekend come out of here? Jesse Reyes. You know? Savannah Ray. All, all, of, these, all of these amazing artists. How do, they, how, do they come, how do they come out of here? Because the foundation is, they're still here in Canada. They still locked down in here in Canada. They built their foundation here in Canada. But they've taken every piece of cultural legacy and brought it to the world. They brought who they are. Because that's one thing Canada has given us the ability to do is like, yeah, my parents are Jamaican. I'm, just going, I'm going to go up on much music. And I did go up on much music and interview reggae artists and speak patois to someone in Saskatoon. Hey, I didn't hear what he I didn't understand what he was saying, but it sounded pretty cool. And, uh, and then he played Beanie Man. <laughs> this guy's crazy. <laughs> but that's, that to me is the, the, the importance of the foundation that we have in this country. And we can't take that away because these, these young bright sparks that are coming up, they're taking it because they're, they, they've grown up with it. Their parents have watched me or whatever, whatever they watched. They're coming from a different time and a different place. And we have to understand, understand that and, and continue to embrace it and support it. So, um, yeah, so hit me up on TikTok. <laughs> All right. Just want to say uh, thank you, Master T. Please give him a round of applause. This is Thank nice. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, a really great storyteller, actually. Of Master T. I am? Yes, definitely. Not that job. No, wait. Am I kidding? Didn't you see when he, the way he sat down, how he engaged us? It could be about anything. We would be listening. Exactly. And Thank in you. the Thank spirit you. of honoring your legacy, but also giving you your flowers while you're here, um, we just can't talk about it. Let's be about it. We would like to present you with an award tonight. What? So if you please oh, stand up and receive. Oh, you know, awards aren't good because I get teary, teary, teary guys. So. Yeah. so this is the Trailblazer Award. <laughs> In recognition of all the work that you have done. Um, and I know this is African uh, Music Week. Um, and for us to honor this, we are honoring also the foundation that we are building on. So all the work you've done for hip hop, all the work you've done for the Caribbean, like music has made it possible for African music to begin um, to have an impact in this country. So thank you so much for being a trailblazer. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not a part of it, but I'm gonna interrupt, right? Because as I get to you from Rexdale, <laughs> as I get to you from your Rexdale, I grew up on much music. I grew up on Extend the Mix first, and then it went to the mix. And I'm very old, <laughs> but I look like you, young. <laughs> All right, so I really wanted to just tell you from, from like a fan base that, you know, you paved the way for a lot of young guys within the city, just the, the connection that you had with the artist, the platform that you created. And like, I'm not sure if you hear this all the time, but we're, we're, we're very proud of you very proud of the, the, the trail that you blaze um, to make us here at this day, just giving us all this wonderful information. And I really want to do is thank you uh, for just all those years of the wonderful interviews, the wonderful advice and the different people that you brought into this country just to make it possible for young people like us to, to look up to an individual like yourself. Thank you so much. Yes.
quickly. Um, you know what? I was not. Do you want me to sit back down? Is that easier for you? You want me to sit? You good? Um, you know, thank you so much for this. I, you know, I did not anticipate. I mentioned I heard him say an award, but in the beginning, I was like, oh, okay. I, I mean, this means a lot to me. You know, um, this is part of being sixty. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is this is part of having a, a legacy that people understood and they got it, and they appreciated it, and that means that means so much to me. It really does. Um, you know, to receive the Trailblazers Award is uh, is is about is about foundation, man. Is that you know never to take away from our people, for who we are. People people slide us. We don't support. We don't this. We are supporting. This is this, this is a new rise. This is a new rise. And if I'm if I'm to be there in any way to give a level of support, I already talked to Jules. I know I'll be working with Jules again. I know I got if I text him now on WhatsApp, he's gonna say, he's gonna show me his location. <laughs> I know he is. But you know this is this is important for me, and it means a lot just to be here and just for you all to listen and hear my stories. I, I appreciate that. I'm gonna take you back quickly. I, I told Jules on the phone when we were talking about about a week ago before you know with everything set up. I said I remember going to concerts, and it was you know um, world music artist. World music artist, and I'd be like, "Oh, who, who's coming to town?" You know, uh, um, Alpha Blondie was Alpha, Alpha Blondie was coming to town. You Masakela was coming to town. You know, um, like all of the it was tagged, it was labeled as world music, and he he started laughing. He goes, "You should share that," <laughs> because now this music is global. This music is out there for everybody to touch and feel and hear. Everyone wants a everyone wants a beat. Everyone wants this. Everyone wants a connection on this on this music, and, um, and I'm glad that you know people feel that I, I had the ability to to touch and, and to reach out. And so this this is truly honored. I have a place for it right now. And mom, you're not having this one. <laughs> all right, respect. Thank you all for taking the time to listen and enjoy. Because I know there's some vibes going on tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah mom, just. <laughs> Anyway, so take care and stay blessed and safe. One love. Thank you. All right. That was uh, the legendary Master T blessing us with his presence and telling us some, giving us some really good insight. I want to remind you tonight, the last thing that we are doing is the Afrobeats Festival, which is taking place at uh, the National Event Center, 1000 Finch Avenue West, um, we're going to have a lot of DJs like uh, DJ D Flex, DJ Darnett. Um, we're also going to have uh, Specs the Boss there. And performing, we'll have uh, Yinka is going to be performing, Tome, uh, Slim Flex also going to be there. And uh, who else? Fuller Sound, uh, Sound, uh, Sound Band. Okay. And Black also Stars. Black Stars and uh, Tropic Band is also going to be there. So. It's a thick lineup, and um, if you're tired of watching things on your YouTube or on your phone, and you want to brave it, just come down 1000 Avenue, Finch West. It's going to be in person, but obviously all of the, uh, you know, the distancing will be uh, maintained, so we're only using a limited capacity of the space. So if you're interested, it is being made available free. And it's being made available free because this event is being funded by the Canada Council of the Arts. Also want to give a shout out to the rest of the sponsors, Aim to Impact, um, African uh, Music Week, obviously. And um, there's HNIC. I was trying to get that right, you know, because HNIC for me is the head Nigerian in charge. But in this case, it actually stands for Helping Neighborhoods Implement Change. And uh, Gisha Productions, Inc., um, Afro Entertainment, and Dork TV. And don't forget, it's all free. Log on to africanmusicweek.ca to register. Um, and if you want to check it out online, you can as well. And I want to big up your TikTok one last time <laughs> so that we can make it go viral. <laughs> on, on the down low, the TikTok is at... Master T is back with two K's, right? B A C K K. Right. There you go. You didn't hear it from me, all right? Just 
And you know, you know, you know, like these days you gotta have like you know like a backup like burner account in case your other one goes down. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, really appreciate this. It's been amazing. And until tonight, enjoy yourselves and have a good time. All right. Peace.